Okay, we're ready to start. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order uh, November 26, 2018 at 3.02 p.m. Roll call. Ms. Snell? Here. Ms. Metoyer? Here. Ms. Fleur? Here. Mr. Davenport? Here. Ms. Franco's absent? Ms. Black? Here. Ms. Yelsey? Here. Dr. Navarro is not here yet. Okay. <laughs> you know what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> okay, do we have any cards? Okay, we're going to go into closed session. We're ready to go. So I'd like to call the meeting to order November 26, 2018 at 6 p.m. We'll start with opening ceremonies, moment of reflection, and pledge of allegiance uh, led by Raphael. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, adoption of agenda. Move adoption. Second. Adoption of agenda moved by Ms. Yelsey, seconded by Mr. Davenport. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries. Uh, adoption of minutes from November 13, 2018 and November 15, 2018. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Black and seconded by Ms. Batoye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're going to start off with the presentation of the board's Distinguished Service Award to Judith Franco, and I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. Floor. Uh, yes, unfortunately, um, Mrs. Franco is not with us to, uh, tonight. Um, she is in the hospital, and we send our prayer. She's doing fine, but uh, we know that she would have been here if she could have. So. Um, it's my pleasure to read the resolution um, of the board of the, the governing board of the Newport Mesa Unified School District Distinguished Service um, Board Award, honoring Judith A. Franco. Whereas Judith A. Franco has served the Newport Mesa Unified School District since 1980, and whereas during her 38-year tenure with the Newport Mesa Board of Education, Judith A. Franco has served the Board of Education with the highest of standards, Judy is known for her high level of integrity, work ethic, leadership, dedication, compassion, and for positively impacting the climate and culture of NMUSD. And whereas Judith A. Franco wholeheartedly embraces her local community, there are many civic activities such as the State Board of Directors for the California YMCA Youth and Government Program, Harbor Area Sailing Program, Balboa Bay uh, Sabbat uh, Fleet Junior Sailing, and whereas Judith A. Franco has given unselfishly her, of her time and assistance at every level of the organization through service on many committees and educational organizations, the Harbor Council PTA, Orange County School Boards Association, and the California School Boards Association. Judy is inclusive and always respects the interests of students, parents, employees, and the community. And whereas a result of the exemplary contributions of Judith A. Franco and her dedication to the Newport Mesa Unified School District, the students, fam families, staff, and community, and the Board of Education have greatly benefited. And now, therefore, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Newport Mesa Unified School District presents Judy A. Franco with the Newport Mesa Unified School District's Distinguished Service Award for her outstanding contributions to the district. And by this proclamation, Judith A. Franco will carry with her the best wishes of the Board of Education and of the district for her contributions, happiness, and great success in her future endeavors. Presented and signed, approved. December, um, November 26, 2018, at a regular me meeting of the Board of Education, signed by Vicki Snell, Board President, and Dr. Fred Navarro, Superintendent. And so her name will go on um, the plaque. And we also have the Distinguished Service uh, pin that is actually a necklace, and so we will get that to her. So we are most pleased. 
And then uh, for many of you, uh, once we get the plaque for the Judith A. Franco courtyard, patio courtyard, um, we'll let you know when that's going to occur. She'll be here for that. <laughs> so there's only four people on here. Because that's a, that's a, that's the oh. new. <laughs> it's a, okay. Um, Mrs. Yelsey. Uh, yes. Um, I just wanted to add, some of us received, it, a few of us received an email this weekend um, about Judy and something being named about her. And I thought it was very nice, especially I had wanted Judy to hear this. And um, I asked this person, I, I suggested this person read it because I thought it was so nice. And, um, but I said I would be honored to read it on her behalf. So I just wanted to read part of this. When I was teaching fourth grade art appreciation and wanted to take two classes from the LA County Art Museum and did not have the money, Judy Franco stepped up and paid for our trip on her own funds. Not an insignificant amount of money. Next, when I wanted to do the same thing with the Newport Beach Summer School program, Judy stepped up again. Although I have not agreed with Judy most of the time and actually ran against her, I have always admired her energy and her belief in what she was doing. If anyone should have something named after them, it is Judy Franco. She has put in 30, 38 years doing something important and something she believed in. Not many people can say that, but Judy can. She has been a force of nature for all that time. She has worked hard for what she believed the students in Newport Mesa needed with all that Franco energy, and multitudes of kids can thank her for that. When people say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, that is Judy Franco. Congratulations, Judy, you have ta taught us all something, something important. Sandy Asper. Thank you, that was, that's great. Very nice. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, moving on to student board member reports. Um, we're gonna start with Raphael. Okay. Um, oh. on, de <laughs> on December 6th, we'll be having our annual Dancing with the Staff, where Newport Harbor faculty will challenge each other to a dance off. Um, our drama department will be having their opening night this Friday for, this, for their stage play, Stage Door. Stage Door is a story of 20 aspiring actresses all looking for their big break on Broadway and the silver screen during the tail end of the Great Depression. Follow the lives of these women as their heartaches, failures, loves, and successes unfold before you. <laughs> I just copied and pasted that from the website. <laughs> um, an athletic update. Newport Harbor basketball will be traveling up to Laura High School in Anaheim this Tuesday until Sunday. Um, the entire school is super excited to see the boys give it their all the, this year. Um, recent events, we had our first ever concert in the park style dance at Newport Harbor High School on November 16th. The turnout wasn't as much as we had hoped, but I know we want to be much better at advertising next time we decide to do this. I think because we were rushing to handle the Battle of the Bay, the rallies, and everything else we had planned for November, it began to weigh heavy on us. Let's see next year how it goes. Upcoming events, there's a meeting tomorrow for ELAC, um, for ELAC parents, and we'll be having students a part of the Newport Harbor student translating program translate the entire presentation. Oh, um, ASB will be hosting a holiday week, the last week of school in December, so that students still have fun being at school. Um, we'll be having activities for the students, like cookie decorating, and, and also we are planning to decorate some walls on campus. Um, very festive for the holiday season. That's great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Alex? No, Isaiah. Isaiah. It's right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you look. So uh, just this uh, past Monday before break, our AP economics students, including myself, uh, turned in a paper in which we uh, read, analyzed, and reflected upon an article on the habits of very successful people, which uh, it's part of our current event project, which we all found actually very interesting. And we all found as a through line, apparently talking to yourself is a very common thread amongst those who are very successful. So. Really? It's good to know. Just thought I'd give you a little bit. Um, this coming Thursday, our 10th grade Delta students are going to be taking a trip to UC Santa Barbara and Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo. And uh, tomorrow night, our cross country and boys water polo teams will be having their banquets. And this coming week, our varsity boys basketball team will be participating in the Gri uh, Grizzly Invitational. Um, our grad night reveal will be on this upcoming Wednesday in the quad. And on the Monday before Thanksgiving break, our uh, ASB actually set up a free 
Thanksgiving banquet for all upperclassmen in the quad where we came by in a, a buffet sort of style and we all got food and it was actually really cool. The That's food was funny. good too, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the American uh, Cross Blood Driver will be held on our blacktop this upcoming Friday. And Tuesday of next week, our clubs will be meeting for the ICC club meeting to discuss plans for our Santa's Village. Oh. And that is all, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, Jennifer. Good evening. Uh, one of our academic updates at Estancia is that we have recognized 50 students as student of the quarter, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Girls Inc. has decided to not only be available to avid girls, but to everybody in our school. So they'll be running as a club at our at Estancia. It's like first period, second, seventh, and eighth open periods, basically. So it might be exciting. Mm -hmm. And also, um, two recent events is our soccer tournament during lunch, so it gets people interacted during lunch. Also, our toy drive with Lucenia and CSF. And then one recent, ev one upcoming event is our winter music concert. At, it will be December 14 at Costa Mesa High School. And one of our unique information, which I find pretty cool, uh, is that the girls' bathroom has been, had installed hygiene, like, Things so, and it's for free, so it's wow. very helpful to everybody now. That's yes. nice. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everyone. So academically, our Academy of Global Studies has, in the past, actually fundraised enough money to build four wells in. Uh, Latin America and Africa for fresh water. And so now actually after, it was my freshman year where this happened. So as a senior, we have the opportunity to actually visit two of these Ooh, wells in Swaziland. So I think it's just an absolutely like awesome opportunity because we worked so hard to raise all this money and now we finally get to see it like and see how we affected lives and just, I think it's a really cool opportunity. And so obviously everyone at CDM is really excited for that and then Athletically, our football team this last Saturday played in the CIF finals for Division Four, and so obviously that was an awesome honor, but we didn't get the victory, but there's always next year, so I think we'll get it then. <laughs> and then um, recently at our school, similar to Raphael, we had our Dancing with the Teachers competition, and so whether it was teachers, faculty, or staff, we saw everyone working together with our orchestra's dance team to kind of give a little performance for all the students. And so it was interesting. You know, you got to see the, some of the teachers that obviously were practicing a little harder than the other ones, but <laughs> it, was, it was great. And so some upcoming events are that a lot of our clubs participate in this annual tradition of donating to those in need through a charity called The Giving Tree. And so it's just, a, it's obviously really cool because during the holiday season, it's sometimes those families need help the most. And so, seeing our student-run clubs kind of take that initiative and then working to fundraise or donate is obviously really cool. And so also upcoming is our uh, lunchtime dodgeball tournament. And so for all the kids that kind of get a little antsy, some of the middle schoolers that are on our joint campus like to play dodgeball or like to do anything like that during lunchtime, they'll be able to. And then actually the champions get to play a teacher team at the end. So. That'll Ooh. be interesting. <laughs> and that's all we got, so thanks. That's great, thank you. Let's make sure none of those teachers get hurt. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna ask about the field trip. <laughs> the, the wells, going to the wells. Who's when you, going, the whole class, what? You need to so come back. It's, Sorry, I, I just okay. wanted, yeah. Sure, so the Academy of Global Studies is one of our signature academies, and yes. so it's the students have to pay for it, but it's offered to all the students if they want to come to. And a, a teacher will be uh, chaperoning them? Yeah, the teacher is chaperoning. And so really? we go to <laughs> Cape Town, South, South Africa for a wonderful. few days and then take two day trips up to the wells in Swaziland. So, oh, yeah. Wonderful. When? Okay. when? When? It's in the upcoming spring, but the signups just came out. So everyone's <laughs> oh, kind of rushing okay. towards that. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Wow, what an opportunity. <laughs> 
Wonderful. Okay, you learn a lot from the students. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just keep looking at I know. Mr. Lisa. I, okay. Um, Harbor Council PTA report. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I almost let Lucy. Lucy, I'm sorry. I forgot Lucy. I was so blown away by this field trip. Okay. Swazi was kind of sitting back anyway. So was Swazi. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, our academic update this Wednesday, we'll be having one of our first information nights at ECHS. It's going to be at 6.30. And it is meant for middle school students and their parents, but really anybody can come that's, um, that wants to learn more about our school. And our principal, Dr. Martinez, along with our high school counselor, Mrs. Galini, and some other students will be there to share information about ECHS and their personal experience with the school. Um, the application for students to apply to ECHS for the upcoming school year will be available January 1st. And we would like to thank the representatives from the OC Department of Education, Coastline Community College, Cal State Fullerton, UCI Youth Employment Services, and more for attending and participating in our second annual California College Application Success Campaign event, <laughs> um, also known as CAS, uh, last Tuesday. We celebrated every senior applying to at least one university or college this year, which was a really big deal. And we got to celebrate with a tunnel of all of the classes, holding posters, and um, we actually wrote chalk all over the halls so everybody could walk through and take pictures. It was really nice. Um, we celebrated, oh, sorry. Um, we also held a college panel discussion for all ninth through 11th graders to just um, kind of ask questions from experienced alumni and counselors and um, community members who shared their experiences about college and just kind of um, giving more insight about what it's actually like to go to college. And on November 16th, almost two thirds of our senior class actually attended a Cal Poly Pomona field trip, sorry. And it was really fun. It was definitely a bigger campus than we're used to, but um, a lot of us liked it. And I think a few of the seniors in our class are actually gonna attend or apply to that school. Wow. And um, over the past year, we've actually visited 12 colleges and universities. So mm -hmm. we're planning on um, reaching out to more schools to see if we can um, see what it's like at other campuses. Mm -hmm. Our ECHS dance students will be performing this Saturday at 6.30 p.m. at the Costa Mesa Performing Arts Center to kick off the holiday season. And the Living History program will begin next Monday, December 3rd, as our seniors will be taking part in discussions with veterans in small group interviews as part of an American democracy assignment. It's a pretty big deal, we do it every year, so everybody's pretty excited for that. And then the veterans will be sharing their experiences in the service, which we all look forward to because their stories are really interesting. Um, lastly, on Friday, December 7th, we will be holding our annual environmental issues fair at the Back Bay Interpretive Center. This is the annual freshman project that everybody has to do. And it consists of small groups who focus on environmental issue um, with the use of biology, math, language arts, and arts, and art in presenting their projects and public service announcements to the public at the fair. The event starts at 6 p.m., and everybody is invited to come by and see them present. That's all. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Great report. Okay, now we'll move on to Harbor Council PTA report. Mrs. Link. Hi. Good evening, President Snell, board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet and guests. Harbor Council membership update. I'm happy to say that 10 of our schools are up and running on the new program totem. Mm. And we have 65 more members as of last time, so our total is 6,210 members. We're hoping that after the holidays and after the rush and everything that we can get on board, because it's really easy to get the schools on board with having the, uh, the president and the treasurer together, mm -hmm. and you just sign on. It's super easy, but I just need to get all these schools to go and get rolling with it so <laughs> anyways okay and we had um i want to do a recap on our parent ed series um the last one we we're thrilled to say that the last parent series with dr galina nikolaskaya at cdm <laughs> middle school was very well attended we had approximately 175 in attendance oh, wow. from all different schools in the district and uh, she had a terrific powerpoint uh, presentation 
that I thought gave very valuable and very pertinent information on Parenting with Love and Logic. And our next one will be December 12th at Newport Harbor High School in the Reading Room. And we're doing Bullying Awareness and Prevention. Um, that's turning out to be a really good, really good deal. I'm very happy with that. Okay, and on to our holiday luncheon. <laughs> I want to do a reminder that it's next week, December 3rd at the Avenue of the Arts Hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay, hope to see you guys there. Oh, you there. And uh, recap on a reflections reception. This really touched my heart. Going, going there, it was a perfect evening, showing, showcasing so many of our, our students' wonderful art. It was heartwarming to see the parents that showed up, and they were just like, oh, look at them, taking a picture with their <laughs> students when, when it was on the big screen and everything. It was really neat showing all the, the children's creativity. And you know, we have some very talented, creative mm -hmm. students at Newport Mesa. So kudos to all the teachers and staff. So. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, moving on. 13A, uh, report on modernization of Corona Del Mar Middle and High School sports field. Okay. Mr. Holcomb. Thank you, President Snell. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask Ada Zarasny come, to come up and give us a report. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good evening, President Snell, board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and guests. I'm Otta Zarezny, I'm the Director of Facilities. I have been overseeing the CDM Sports Field project for years now. <laughs> uh, we have to. She's not kidding. Luckily, I've worked here almost 15, so I've been able to be a part of it. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, so tonight what I'm going to do is briefly go over where we are in the project and um, I'm going to go back just a little bit because I know we do have some new board members in our audience tonight, so welcome. Um, and just want to make sure we're wrapping this up with, with a pretty bow because we are moving nice. ahead quite quickly now that we've got some momentum. Um, and so we're really looking forward to kicking off the actual construction. So things are now pretty much everything has been approved. Everybody's seen it so many times now that um, it just really is moving really quickly. So I want to get everybody's um, full buy-in and understanding on where we are on the project and be able to move ahead and, and get this project uh, constructed. So um, just to, to back up. I'm not going to go back from the first day we ever talked about this project because that's been forever ago. But um, just to give some background on some of the critical dates that have, you know, we've made uh, decisions. So once the project was identified and funding was established, uh, we entered into a contract for design with LPA Architects in October of 2015. So that's been over three years now just in design. Um, and so just to refresh everybody's memory of what that project was, um, it was really developed after a standard project that we had done for district-wide facilities and specifically Costa Mesa High School and Corona Del Mar High School. We developed a master plan that identified a sports field with artificial track and turf with bleachers, um, scoreboards, sports lighting, and potentially an opportunity for a field house building that could be comprised of concessions and restrooms. And then even further, we also had an opportunity in that master plan to have team rooms. And so we know as we went through and analyzing what funding was available, we had to scope down on these projects and figure out what we could really afford. So when we move forward, um, which, so everybody knows here, both CDM and Costa Mesa budgets were approved at the same time. <laughs> Costa Mesa has been open for over a year now. So we've put a lot of extra work into CDM and so this is you know, a great moment for all of us. Um, but as we went through determining what scope would move forward with Costa Mesa, we had to eliminate the team rooms and um, so we had to go through that analysis. We used that basis of program from Costa Mesa High School for the Corona Del Mar High School. 
So we know as we went through that process and we engaged in the CEQA process, which really gave us our opportunity to engage our community and hear the input and the feedback in a more comprehensive way than is sometimes done. So this allowed us to kind of step back a little bit, take a breather, and figure out what we really needed for Corona Del Mar High School. Um, the programs, at, the athletic programs at Corona Del Mar High School clearly are, uh, are our facilities are used more because it's a seventh grade through 12th grade facility or school site. The same with Costa Mesa, there's just different levels of participation in athletics. So some of the fields get used more than others. Some of the uh, sports teams that we have are different. They have a, a, a more significant program of lacrosse at CDM, so just different needs. So we adapted our plan to meet those needs for Corona Del Mar High School. And as we went through the CEQA process, through that process, we identified a need for two art artificial turf fields. And so in, let's see. So in October, a year after we started design with LPA, in October of 2016, we determined that we needed to create these alternative projects as part of the CEQA process. So we looked at two fields, no light option, um, one field, no concessions, ticketing options. We looked at a variety of different ways to accomplish the project. Um, at the result of that, which occurred in October of 2017, so October is our time, right? <laughs> October 15, October 16, October 17th. We've made all these critical decisions. And so in October of 17, we had our final CEQA document, which is California Environmental Quality Act, which is basically to assess what our project is going to do to the environment. How is this facility going to impact everything around it? So we completed that document in October of 17, and the board made a decision to construct or to authorize design and construction for the two field two lit options. So we're gonna have two artificial fields, one will have the track around it, and both fields get sports lighting. So there's other things that go around uh, along with that, um, but that's the, that's the big chunk of the project. So we approved the two field option. We had a extra level of design that had to go into that two field option. We approved that change to the design contract in February of 18. And since then, uh, our team has, with LPA, has been moving you know, as fast as we possibly can to get this project designed. While we've done that, we have made, um, we've made sure that we've had particular meetings. So the board set a policy that said, any project that this district does, we are going to engage the community at all of these milestones. And so we've been able to do that with this project. We've done a tremendous amount of additional meetings for this project, but at, we met all of our milestones and our obligations. And so since February of 18, we've completed all of the, almost all of the phases of design to have us prepared to submit to DSA, which is the Division of State Architect, which is basically our plan checker for all of our construction documents. And again, I'm saying this for the benefit of some others as well. Mm -hmm. um, to approve our documents for construction. And so we have completed design development, we've completed our 50% construction documents, and as of today, we have received our 100% construction documents to be prepared to submit to DSA in December. Oh so what that means is, is the architect has finished their design, they've given us those documents for review, so now internally, facilities and maintenance and operations, um, we'll all take a look at these documents to ensure they've incorporated all our changes throughout all of the phases. Um, in addition to the design piece of it, we've had in the last month, let's see here, on November 9th, we met with the school site and the athletics to review the 50% site plan to say, this is, where, this is where we found some changes that were necessary, so we reviewed all of those items with the site, and really the only thing that we left with the site for them to decide is basically colors and what stripes are going on the field. Mm -hmm. And so we have a base plan of what we've done at all of the other schools, and so it's consistent with that, but because they have the second field option, 
there's a little bit more detail that we need input on and so we've left that with the school site they're getting back to us on that and we'll be able to finalize that and have that submitted into our plans and to DSA in December so what all of that means is mm -hmm. that we will be able to start construction in June of 2019 Yay! so our <laughs> intent is to start construction as early as possible in June the school is on board with that plan and have made other arrangements for where their athletics program will occur over the summer they've already planned for graduation occurring off-site so that's taken care of and the intent is to have the field ready for graduation for 2020 so oh we're gosh. on track right. yeah. yes um, so, in, <laughs> so we had the meeting with the school site on November 9th we had the meeting with the CDM working group, which is comprised of um, personnel from City of Newport Beach. The um, East Bluff Homeowners Association is invited to that. And the Newport Citizens for Responsible Growth members are also invited to that. We had that meeting on the 14th at CDM in the lecture hall. We had a decent turnout. Um, luckily, everybody has seen the plan so many times there weren't any surprises <laughs> there weren't any complaints there weren't any oh you didn't tell us about that so I felt really really good about that I think uh, everybody that's involved has put in so much energy into it and we've made a lot of changes based off of those responses and so I think it's really good um, we're gonna have a really good outcome so we've had both of those meetings um, our next meeting was to present to you and to show you where we are with the plan which will look familiar to you, so that's a good thing. Um, and really just get this project moving, get the final budget approved, get into DSA, and be prepared to go out to bed, bid next year and start construction in June. Yay, right. Okay. Yay. Yeah, I know. So that's the boring stuff. Um, <laughs> it's pretty exciting to us. Yeah. 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 I tried to ramble that off as fast as possible, too. Okay, so I'm showing you this parts of the same presentation that LPA brought to us. I like to reuse so that if there's ever a question of what did we show the board, well, it's the same thing I showed the site, it's the same thing I showed the working committee, so here it is. So it's dated October 2nd because that's when we met with LPA. We asked them to make changes and then we were prepared to meet with the school site in November. And October's the month. And October is the month. <laughs> <laughs> so, this plan here is the updated plan. Um, there were some minor changes that have been made. Oh, excuse me, this actually, I got stuck with the old plan. Oh, I apologize, it didn't say, but I'll, I'll, it's very simple what, what the changes were. Um, so this is the overall plan. As we know, we have um, up would be on the north side, we have the track field, which will primarily serve for games for the G JV teams, um, and then varsity, varsity for football will play at New Newport Harbor as always. So we know that was one of the mitigation measures, I'd say, mm -hmm. in the CEQA document to allow us to get these two fields with lights on this, on Corona Del Mar High School was that the varsity football games would continue to be played at Newport Harbor High School. So although it is their main practice field, they won't, varsity won't play games here, but JV will play games. So you have on the first field, which is the track field, we have the track and field, we have the field itself, um, and then we have all of the typical um, improvements that go along with the track and field. So we have the triple jump, long jump, we have a scoreboard, we have the flagpole, we have our shot put areas, and going through the design with the shot put areas, that's one of the areas that we did make some changes, and really that's just fencing, and then access through the shot put area to the discus area, which ends up being um, an overlay of an area that we've preserved that if ever needed or warranted, we could potentially build a JV softball field if required. So no. we know that there isn't a heavy need for softball fields at Corona Del Mar High School, but that could change. And so we've preserved that area 
and um, we've shown it on this plan just in case anyone ever says, hey, why don't you have a JV field? Do you have a JV baseball field? Mm -hmm. So why not? So there it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what we did with the shot put area was really to increase the height of the fencing because of throwing and having the track and runners running by mm -hmm. immediately yeah. adjacent. We had to create little areas that really had taller fencing, which maybe visually isn't the best thing you wanna see, but safety comes first. So they got a little bit taller fencing. With the discus area, the cage itself, we've rotated slightly um, so that again, when they're throwing, if for some reason they're not the best thrower and they're just new, <laughs> they're not throwing it to Vista Del Oro and hitting a car. So we've kind of tried to think about those common sense things that need to happen and incorporate it into this plan, which isn't necessarily exactly what you've seen before, but those are the type of things that we vet out through the process. Um, and then we know from the original project to this project, we end up with visitor bleachers only on the south side of the project of the main field, which we know that is only 664 seats maximum. So when it comes down to it, when the bleacher company comes in and says, oh, there's actually 662, that's fine. We just know we can't exceed that number per mm -hmm. sequa. So we have bleachers on one side, um, the discus area, and then we have the second field. And the second field really is to serve lacrosse and soccer. And that field is also lit. It's really, really hard to tell where um, the lighting is, but just, there's a tiny, oh, you can't, see. yeah, there's a tiny little dot right here. <laughs> and there's four lights on each of the fields. The main field has 80 foot lights, and that's due to the <coughs> fact that there is a track around the field. You have to have the taller lights to be able to get this, the coverage and the span over the field. Otherwise, if you have shorter lights, you're only gonna be covering this area. So mm -hmm. by bringing them up even 10 feet allows us to get over the track and onto the field. And because we don't have a track around the second field, we're, we could put 70 foot lights. Mm -hmm. All of that was um, demonstrated in our CEQA documents in all of the visualizations, vis visualiz I can't say the word. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, simulations, how about that one? There, that works. <laughs> It was uh, documented there, and as you all know, that document's on our website if anyone needs to take a look at it. Uh, so what we were able to do, in addition to the field itself, we were able to create a warm-up area for the second field, which is here, um, which is just a great asset to the site. And we were also able to expand this concrete area here outside of the weight room, which the school site has had a request to do that since the building was built. Mm -hmm. We said, hold on, hold on, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. So. We're now getting, they wanted to pay for it, but now it's part of the project, so. <laughs> um, the one change from the current plan, the new plan, so this is the 50% CD plan, is this area here. So this area here, which is a really odd shape in between the varsity field, baseball field and the new lacrosse soccer field, is this funny little shape of, of, um, of landscaped area. Well, this area, what we decided to do is really enclose that area and make it more of a back of house type area. So maintenance and operations mm. will have their equipment back there. It'll be fenced off. It's really not a great way to get around this project anyhow, because there's a lot of pinch points. There is a lot of electrical gear back here. There's the generator for the theater project back there. So it's more of a utility yard. So try to make it this pretty improved area. Just wasn't really settling well. So we've kind of <coughs> gone away from that idea and that's really back of house area now. Mm. Um, and so what that leaves us with is a great opportunity in between the fields to create some sort of gathering area. So long term you can have parents gather in this area between the two fields and your main entry point to the fields will be in this area. If you're oh. following my cursor or my hand up here, uh -huh. we'll be here. So we're really trying to announce where the entrance is and take it away from the street. Mm -hmm. So really you're coming onto campus now and that goes along with all of the fencing and security projects that we're doing around the district is to create pathways that are improved and really more attractive places to gather. And so this gives us this opportunity to do that in this area here. 
So you'll essentially come from the pool or north parking lot as we sometimes refer to it. And you'll come in along the pool entry and in between the gymnasium. That'll be your main entry point. And you'll come up behind the tennis courts along. So basically, here's the parking oh, okay. lot. You'll come through here, back here, and then along this road here, which is the fire lane. So it serves really well as a walkway. Mm -hmm. um, and then to this, this point here. And then you'll be able to get access to either this field or, or this field. Um, and we all know everybody likes to be close to the restrooms, which is right here at the weight room. So it's a good place to meet. Hmm. Um, so is there anything else that you want me to cover on, on the site plan itself? I, actually, uh, just to add that uh, the other reason for making the change was that that change saves $100,000 uh, in the project budget, which uh, even as you see the budget increasing, is very, very tight uh, at this point. And in fact, um, as we met, um, there were a number of things that we needed to look at uh, with regard to the overall budget because um, things such as the stormwater uh, mm. treatment uh, is very, very expensive uh, for this. So having two fields requires us to treat twice as much stormwater on site. So uh, we were looking at ways uh, that we could, in the true definition of value engineering, uh, obtain the same amount of value out of the site, or even one could say better value by using that uh, area more as a back of house uh, and save ourselves money at the same time. So that's one of the things that happened in that discussion. That's great. So where we are on budget is, and the reason why I went all the way back to 2015 is to understand that not only the scope of the project has changed from its original project, which was one field, to two fields with lighting, uh, a lot of time has passed. And so in, there's cost increase. Mm -hmm. So our original project, which was established in 2015, the, the budget for the overall project was about $11 million. We haven't touched that budget until today. So. Although we know that we've had some changes, we really weren't at a point because we were going through CEQA and other elements of the project to update the overall budget. Once we got the project, two field project approved, we've been going as fast as we can to get the project designed. But with every increment of design, we do do an estimate. So we've completed an estimate for all of these phases and the overall project budget now is $14.6 million. So if you go back and you look at what escalation is over the years, um, there's about a 5 to 9% escalation factor that depending on the phase you're in <laughs> in design, you'll assess that, that uh, percentage to your project. So we're looking at about 600000 to a $1 million of escalation for each of those years, mm -hmm. just on it alone. Mm -hmm. So we knew the costs were going to go up. We knew we were doing two fields. We knew we were doing two sets of lights. We know we're do addressing the storm, uh, storm, storm water issue, which when you see a completed project, all you see is new turf, right, essentially. If the infrastructure that we have to put underground to support that is tremendous, million dollars just for tanks under, under our field. Nobody's ever going to see them. No, no one's ever going to know about them, other than they cost money, right? Are well, they under? Are they under every turf field? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so, depending on the type of or the type of soil, it could be even a worst case scenario. Mm. CDM has the best soil of, which is funny, right? CDM has the best dirt. Um, <laughs> Costa Mesa has the worst dirt. Yes, we do. <laughs> right. So, in addition dirt. to um, the the uh, tanks underground, we also have on the backside of Costa Mesa, you'll see that giant um, area where mm. the water, if we have a large rain, will fill up and then eventually percolate. So in addition to storage tanks, because you're not allowed to have any of your water leave your site without being treated. That's the bottom line. You have to collect 100% of your water, which is different from even when we did Estancia, mm -hmm. Jim Scott Stadium. These new regulations have come into play in the last few years, five or six. Um, Estancia is 10 years old now. So there's a lot of compliance happening that you won't see. Um, but 
going back to Costa Mesa High School, in addition to that other area, we also have a pump system. If we have way too much water, then eventually it'll pump that area out, treat it, pump it, and, and send it on its way across our own property. Because you can't just directly connect to storm drain. It's just not allowed anymore. So there's a lot of costs that have changed just as time has gone um, with other agencies and how we have to comply with them. It's also happening with homes too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we don't have to pay for that. <laughs> So, so that's where we are in the budget. There's a, there's a board item uh, in the mm -hmm. consent calendar that is asking for you to approve the, the final budget to move forward. Um, and, you know, we've been, we went through, just so you know, we've gone through an extensive value engineering effort. So we come in and they say, oh, this is what your number is. And we say, okay, well, what can we, how can we reduce it? Mm -hmm. So we've gone through that effort. We've reduced everything we could possibly reduce. We have, um, and, and this type of project, there isn't really much you can do. There aren't bells and whistles on this project. Mm -hmm. It's turf, bleachers, lights, and a scoreboard, right. and a flagpole. Right. When it comes down to it, right. right? There's no more team room, there's no more, <laughs> right. Right. There's no more snack bar, yeah. No restroom. Yeah. No, okay, Mr. Trader. I know you've budgeted for this. <laughs> <laughs> He's just looking. Yeah. Yes. That, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. No, I, I, I knew, it wasn't I knew the answer. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> that's all I had for you tonight. Thank you so much. That's a lot. Any questions? Oh, yeah, Mrs. Yelsey. Well, I don't have a question, but I was at the working group committee, and it was really nice because I think you had allotted an hour and a half for that meeting, and it took a half an hour because everyone had seen this so often. And there were city people, as she said, city people, people from the work, every uh, citizens committee, wow. and sure. everyone agreed that that's what they had. It was great. It was great. Yeah. It was great. I, honestly, the only thing that came out of the city was a concern about where contractors were right. going to park. And so as part of our construction documents, when we go out to bid, we will identify how that contractor is going to do his business. And so basically what we're allowing him to do is we're allowing him to take this entire area here, which would be this future softball field, and fence that in, and they can use this as their laydown area. So the trucks yeah. will continue to come in off Vista del Oro, off of that drive during construction, and maintain themselves within their working area. So not to say that one isn't gonna try to park on the street, but we are giving them that requirement that they yeah. need to park on site and in their own fenced area. One other thing I wanna mention really quick, so I don't forget, is as part, um, as part of this project, what we will do is we will do an initial phase that will establish separation for the remaining natural turf fields and irrigation. So when we go in and build this field in June, the first thing that we're going to do is establish the irrigation for the JV uh, baseball field, for the area that's gonna be left of, of uh, natural turf around that area. The varsity baseball field already has its own um, um, isolation valve, so we can segregate that. And then we'll do the same for the varsity softball field. So there'll be some work that needs mm -hmm. to occur to keep those fields up and running. They'll essentially be down for the summer as well, but back up and established for fall of 19. So that'll just be a summer project. And we're intending on having the contractor do all of that work so there's no finger pointing. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. good. Mrs. Floor. Yeah, I think it's really important to, to recognize again um, the cooperative effort that has been made with the community, with us, the city, in terms of this is, as you said, our, a, a very basic project. <laughs> um, from where we started, which was full, full on uh, bleachers, mm -hmm. up to a thousand, similar to Costa Same Mesa, game. snack bar, yeah. uh, PA system, uh, team room, team room, fancy, smancy uh, entrance, right. all of those uh, seating, to basically the the community of Crona del Mar, um, those coaches, especially the football coach, God bless them, said, you know, 
we got a beautiful stadium over at Newport Harbor. Why would we change? Why, we're, we're okay. We're okay with that. They want to the, sell more than a thousand seat tickets, right? They yes, and they, and they and they did that. But what we really need is we need additional space for for our lacrosse teams and our 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 soccer teams and everything. So I think it's a it's a great compromise, um, and it will be a lovely a lovely program and. Uh, Move on. Okay. And and the, one of the big things, I'm sorry, okay. that, they, that CDM coaches were saying, we have to farm out all of our practice sessions because there isn't enough time exactly. and space on our campus home. to mm -hmm. do this. We'd like our kids to be on our own campus when they're practicing. And I know at Mesa, we've got lots of room. So everybody, nobody has to go anywhere. So that, and so does Estancia. And they said, hey, that's what we really want. We want our kids to practice on our own field. So mm -hmm. yeah, this good. accomplishes that. So, so you can tell all the coaches that Mrs. Matoy said Costa Mesa has lots of room. So next year, when CDM needs pa places to practice, and <laughs> and said, and and yes. yes, but we we've been very friendly. Just ask the. Swim team. So the last thing I want to leave you with is that because we are constructing these, pro these fields as one project, we are really doing ourselves a huge favor by not dealing with the second phase of another million dollar escalation right. and another million dollars of overhead or soft costs, right? So we're doing these projects in one year rather than two years. Mm -hmm. The site is going to, you know, take the brunt of that, of course, by, by having mm -hmm. their um, teams practice elsewhere, but you're really saving probably $2 million minimum by doing it this year versus right. wow. phasing it out. That's okay. a huge thing. Nice job. So, That's huh? huge. Thank Great. You. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Nice Thank job. You. Yes. Okay. We're going to move on to informational items. Yes. And I'm going to Bring this on, Mr. Lee Song. I just want to see if he can give us an update on Thought Exchange. I know he's been kind of peeking in on occasion. Uh, maybe he doesn't have a final report, but a little update. Did you do? Did you do the Thought Exchange? Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to acknowledge Raphael, who was the star of our introductory yes, video. Yes, so Raphael, <laughs> thank you for Fabulous. being part of that. Uh, I haven't uh, <laughs> checked it since uh, Thought Exchange officially closed uh, this past uh, Monday, the 19th. Uh, but I do have a meeting with the Thought Exchange staff to start to review the data process. And when I have something to report, I would be very, very pleased to share that with the board. I went on at the very, very earliest stages. There were like maybe only 20 responses so far. It was fun. It was interesting. I saw the potential, so I hope we have lots and lots of input. Okay. That's great. Yes. Okay, community input. <laughs> this is an opportunity for the public to address the board on consent calendar item, agenda items, or on non-agenda items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Per board policy 9323, each individual speaker will have three minutes to cover one or multiple topics, and speakers may not cede unused minutes to other speakers, and there is a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. With board consent, the board president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comments depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to speak. The board, staff, and members of the public may request that a specific item on consent be moved to the discussion action. Requests to move consent items must be received prior to the time the board takes action on the consent calendar. When, when addressing the board, it is helpful to state your name and address for the board. Okay, so um, I have um, Wendy Lease. You're speaking on three three items. Okay. But she's speaking on three items. But she's just. Good evening, members sorry. of the board. Um, my name is Wendy Lease. I've been a resident of Costa Mesa for 46 years. Um, I'm sorry that Judy couldn't be here tonight mm -hmm. to hear all the accolades, but I too would like to thank her for her years of dedication and service to this school district and um, wish her well. And it sounds like you're gonna honor her with a, a dedication of the, the courtyard. Um, a couple weeks ago, I sent uh, a copy uh, of a survey that was online for the community to give input on as far as 
uh, re just as knowing that you were going through the superintendent's evaluation. So you received a copy of that. I kept that more confidential rather than to uh, share some of the, the things, the statements that were made. And tonight, as a show of good faith, mine, and uh, as I represent many people in the community uh, who can't be here, uh, we have a small little group called Newport Mesa Community for Students that we are uh, parents, retired teachers, grandparents, uh, and, and parents of current kids. Uh, but I would like you to uh, consider uh, not approving the superintendent's annual merit performance salary for 217-18-19E for many reasons. Uh, one, this is not a regular meeting. A lot of people wouldn't be, you know, I didn't know that it was a Monday night meeting instead of a Tuesday night, so there may have been people also that would come tonight. Um, it's a considerable amount of tax dollars, which you just talked about, a $3.6 million budget increase for the CDM field. Uh, $22,000 is, is, is a considerable amount of money when we have teachers paying for their own supplies. And the other issue, there are several other issues, is in, in transparency, you met in closed session to talk about all your different ratings and checks on the strengths and the weaknesses of the superintendent's performance. We have no idea, it's a big mystery, about what he did well and where he was weak and what he needs to improve on. And I think in light of the survey, that community members completed that you owe us that report because what were the targets and did he meet them? What were his goals? Uh, so I think you owe it to the public an explanation and to continue the item to December 11th, wait until the new trustees are, seated, are sworn in and seated and be fully transparent with your Newport Mesa community. Also. You know, the whole thing about the Corona Del Mar, where, could you please explain in your public comments, where is that money coming from? $3.6 million is a big amount, and to just not talk about it causes us to cons be concerned. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, uh, Steve Smith. Thank you, Mrs. Snell. Good evening, everyone. A review of the board meeting of November 15th showed that there were at least four violations of the Brown Act. These violations are ongoing, and by now the superintendent should have advised you of the needed corrections, but he, has been, he hasn't because he's either unable or unwilling to do so. This is just a small example of how undeserving he is of the additional taxpayer dollars you're about to give him. A larger example is that the period of time for which you are rewarding him has been notable not for its successes, but for its costly blunders. It's too late for anyone in this room to stop you from giving the superintendent more money. All we can do, and all you're inspiring us to do, is to elect trustees who understand the value and importance of increased accountability, transparency, and fiscal responsibility. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rick Dowdy, Dr. Dowdy. Good evening, Mrs. Snell, mm -hmm. Dr. Navarro, members of the board, members of the public. I'm Britt Dowdy. I'm president of the Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers. And I just wanted to take a minute to publicly thank Mr. Davenport for his many years of service to our community. Um, not only has he been a board member who's given many, many hours of his time to serve the students and the parents and the employees of this uh, school district, he also has been very active in the city of Costa Mesa, supporting them in many other ways as well. Uh, and Mrs. Franco, unfortunately, wasn't able to be here tonight, but she's dedicated her life uh, in much of the same way. And not only has she served this school district in such a, a, a strong leading manner and helped to guide us uh, over decades of, of service, uh, she also has been giving back to her community in many ways as well. And for those people who don't know these two fine uh, individuals, uh, NMFT wants to thank them for their service to our community. Uh, not just to our school uh, school district, but to the community as a larger whole. 
And uh, both Mr. Davenport and Mrs. Franco are examples of citizen servants who give back to their community. We encourage everyone uh, in the cities of Costa Mesa and Newport Beach to get active, give back, even if it's in little ways. And uh, serving in a, an elected office uh, can be very challenging. Um, and we appreciate the sacrifice and service that you've done for our um, school district for many years. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dowdy. Okay, um, Erica Roberts. <clears throat> okay, good uh, evening, members of the board. My name is Erica Roberts. I have four children in the district. I've been here many times, and I will continue to come. Mm -hmm. um, what I want the public to see is the salary that Dr. Navarro is making. He's making $289,915, car allowance of $750 a month, $100 for phone, and a tax sheltered annuity over five years that will mature, but we don't know what that cost actually will be. Tonight, you will be uh, hopefully postponing, but possibly awarding another $29,000 to him. Um, the, pop, the public has the right to know what benchmarks Fred Navarro has met. What will the future look like for our kids' success, and how much will his bonus tax sheltered actually be worth when they mature. It is our money and the public has a right to know what Fred Navarro has done well and what has not been done well. Tan transparency on the evaluation of the tax sheltered annuity is paramount and without a full understanding of the total value, this decision should be postponed for the new board and community to understand. We are requesting that this decision not be made tonight as there is no hurry but an ethical responsibility to the public and to our funds. If a full amount of maturity is not known, then I would ask politely that you postpone this until the meeting you can um, describe what it is for us. I would like to go through a, full, a few bullet points. You can turn it around. Dr. Navarro, Dr. Navarro, I have been uh, to meet with you and see you multiple times, and there's lots of bullet points in this district in the last two years that I've been coming to protect my own children and other children. You may recall this, Dr. Navarro, that you sent out to PT, um, PT members. It says, it's talking about the poles of Estancia. It says the materials will be um, redeployed and utilized at other sites for projects that need protective netting. I'm sure we all remember that debacle is about $800,000. Then <clears throat> about eight months go by and here's the tow, the transfer of equipment. <coughs> These are all pole netting, the poles, 16 of them. And what you wrote here is no longer needed. So we were told as a community that it was a difficult decision and you took them down because you cared about community and they were gonna be recommissioned and they were trashed. <clears throat> Another thing that's been very challenging is all of the lawsuits and lawyer fees. In 2011, we were spending about $600,000 on lawyers. Now it's over the million dollar mark with more to come. I will be asking for public records on that. Dr. Navarro, I asked you for the total Swan Math costs. You told the PTA people $600,000 a year. Then you told my husband I 1.7, and then from the finance department, it was really over $4 million. Here's a graph, usually graphs, when you have 40%, it's down here, not all the way at the top. This is a misinformation. The final thing I'll say is about teachers and the report for the Mariners report. That's how I first got started here. I have looked at this final report. I don't know if all of you've had. Dr. Navarro said he would do exactly the same way because he was protecting teachers. There's nothing in this report that is against teachers. They are protected, this should have been released, and we should not have spent $80,000 to follow the law. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Marty O'Mara. Uh, good evening, Dr. Navarro and uh, President Snell and trustees. Uh, Mr. Davenport, I would also like to thank you for all your service. And also, Judy, I'm sorry she's not here, but she's done a great job for all these years. I hope you enjoy your Tuesday nights. <laughs> um, I don't understand why all these special meetings are called on various days and times, Monday night, Thursday morning, whenever you feel like it, there seems to be another board meeting. 
and the largest school district in Orange County only had one <coughs> special board meeting this year that was called that was not a sports recognition, only one. That's the largest school district. Why do, does Newport Mesa need seven extra meetings this year to conduct business that could be held during your regular school board meetings? I'd like that explained sometime. I really do object to Dr. <coughs> Navarro's tax sheltered annuity this year, unless you can tell me and the public specifically why he deserves a bonus. You have until the end of the year to provide the public with this information and then make a decision on that information. Please don't give us general statements. Explain specifically <coughs> what he has done to deserve a raise or a bonus and what he has done to make this an equitable situation. If it is not there, then divide up that money and give it to teachers that need a little bonus money in their school classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm gonna make a brief statement just so that um, uh, the public understands the process for reviewing a superintendent. Um, it is a complex and, and very thorough procedure and um, I'm gonna read a portion of the policy which you can find online so it will uh, help you to understand the process, why it takes so long to do it. Um, it is not public record, it's a personnel issue which is why we can't release it unless um, uh, we could get sued. Mm -hmm. So um, this is directly from the, the policy. The governing board shall an annually conduct a formal evaluation of the superintendent's performance in order to assess his effectiveness in leading the district toward established goals. Evaluation criteria shall be based on district goals and success indicators agreed upon by the board and superintendent prior to the evaluation. The evaluation shall provide commendations in areas of strength, provide recommendations for improving effectiveness, and serve as a basis for making decisions about salary increases or contract extension. Prior to the evaluation, the superintendent shall be responsible for preparing and distributing to the board for its review a report of progress toward district goals. The superintendent's self-appraisal of accomplishments and performance and a review of actions taken to address any board recommendations from the previous evaluation. The board shall also review the superintendent's current contract and any relevant board policies. Each board member shall independently evaluate the superintendent's performance. The evaluation shall be a composite of individual board member opinions, but there shall be only one final evaluation representing the board's collective judgment. The final evaluation shall be provided to the superintendent for his response. It says his, her on all of these. The board shall meet in closed session with the superintendent to discuss the evaluation. The superintendent shall have an opportunity to ask questions, respond verbally and in writing to the evaluation and present additional evidence of his performance or district progress. After the board and superintendent have discussed the evaluation, the board president and superintendent shall sign the evaluation and it shall be placed in the superintendent's personnel file. Further, again for clarification, this is my words. <laughs> Further, again, for clarification for the community, the awarded annuity is separate from the superintendent's base salary and therefore is not included in his CalSTRS retirement, saving our district those contributions. Furthermore, the tax sheltered annuity is determined annually in accordance with his performance evaluation. It is not an automatic increase. So I, I hope that you will visit the site, read the policy, and know that we are, we have certain ways we have to do things. And there are certain things we cannot publish, and that's the way it is. So 
Moving on, um, superintendent's report. Yes, I would like to uh, respond to a comment that was made about we trash things. Uh, we don't trash anything <laughs> in our district. We can't even give things away. Uh, you know, when I was a, a young principal, I thought, wow, these computers, they're not, they're not they're good not for our classroom, bad. but why don't we just give them to kids? Well, guess what? We can't give them to kids. Everything actually has to be sold. And in the case of poles, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we did transfer them. Mm -hmm. And when we did the design or the, the, the initial, we were told that they wouldn't be useful for that, for the, the, the project that, mm -hmm. that we need to uh, uh, complete at Costa Mesa for the baseball field. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we had to sell. sell them. So they were sold to the highest bidder as the law requires. So they weren't trash. Were, was I disappointed that we couldn't? Of course, but the design just wouldn't uh, allow us to reuse those poles. And so we then had to uh, put them up for auction and, 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 and then the, <coughs> sell, them off, sell them off. Uh, so we don't trash anything. We don't trash anything. Uh, and, uh, uh, and yeah, there are, there are times when uh, there are errors. That was an error the district had made. And uh, I did side on, I did think we needed to be good neighbors to the people who live on Joanne Street and it uh, wasn't an easy decision, but it was the right decision. And, uh, and I think that uh, that's exactly the types of things that boards evaluates the superintendents on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mrs. Floor. Um, uh, a couple of other things. Um, I, wanted to, I did want to comment, and I believe it's important to comment on the reason why we're having the meeting tonight versus um, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> annually every year, uh, the California School Boards Association has their annual trade show and, and convention. Um, and that begins for many of us. Uh, we travel on Tuesday to get to the meetings on Wednesday. Um, this year in particular, it's important because not only are we, um, the five of us, but our two newly elected board members who are sitting in the back are going to be attending their very first one. And they will also be traveling um, tomorrow and attending, and we've made special arrangements so that they have been onboarded and are fully engaged and appropriately um, been trained and had had meetings with our attorney and everything so that they can in fact attend um, and they are covered by workman's comp if anything should happen so they too will be attending on on Wednesday um, so we have to travel to San Francisco tomorrow and two of us have to be up there bright and early at 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning well to get up there there are no flights out of, of LA out of Orange County um, they get into San Francisco re at a relatively early, early time before and seven. before oh, yeah. seven, and so uh, they're they're flying. They're flying. Uh, we've got one traveling into Oakland. We've got a couple and going into San Francisco. So it's really difficult. That's why the meeting, and that's why the meeting was changed for today. Um, Dr. Navarro, could you also address the issue about the seven board meetings? Because I think that. Um, members of the community are sort of confused about that because several of those were in response to the public hearings as relates to the charter school and we are under obligation to meet certain deadlines and so if you could just explain what the, the closed sessions were about and the the uh, the uh, the seven meetings special yes. meetings um, and, and if I could just follow up on your comments uh, by the way this meeting was uh, scheduled a year ago because we knew of this complication mm -hmm. thank you uh, and uh, we would not have had a quorum uh, if we had scheduled it for tomorrow because the two of you would have been gone and unfortunately mrs. Frank was in the hospital mm -hmm. well that would have gotten what would have meant we couldn't have hold held a meeting mm -hmm. so it was better to have it today and uh, even though, you know, and our thoughts are with her, Mrs. Franco's in the hospital, we at least have a quorum today. So, you know, these are uh, what I consider wedge issues. You know, and this was thought of in the political uh, atmosphere up in Washington, D.C. Let's think of something that sounds good, but if it, it's real, but, and let's not think about the facts. Mm -hmm. Let's just, because it sounds good, and it'll make everybody look bad. Well, when you think about it, and you've got to have a quorum, and you want to make sure everybody can travel to, the, the, the staff development they're going to attend in the following week, you have to move your meeting. Mm -hmm. We did that over a year ago, it wasn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was uh, advertised five days before, uh, before uh, the meeting. So that was uh, long before our required mm -hmm. uh, 72 hours. And I announced it, that it would be on Monday at the mm -hmm. end of the last mm -hmm. meeting because yes. it was a different day. 
However, those issues that were brought up, uh, those individuals have left, so they're not they're not benefiting from the response. Mm -hmm. uh, the, as far as the extra meetings, we do uh, ask a lot of our board members, uh, but sometimes it's not our it's not something we can do anything about. When we got the charter petition, you had to have two meetings: one to uh, accept the petition, and one to make a decision about the pet petition. Mm -hmm. So that was two right of way. Others are response to other issues so for example if there's a discussion about an adoption and we can't really ask you to be here for 10 hours on a Tuesday we split those up and ask you to come at a time that's convenient for our staff our teachers and our administrators to come and share that information with you because we need them here as well and so we schedule those at times when they're available as well so we have maybe had four meetings based on those uh, those kind of issues that are urgent uh, and really require more time uh, than you can spend in, during a board meeting. Uh, and we've all had, I know that uh, one of the things we've talked about with regards to this, how we uh, uh, arrange your meetings is we can't have too many reports in one night uh, because those reports end us, you know, end up uh, going on for 20 minutes minimum. And by the time we get to the third report, it kind of all blends and that's not good for decision making as well so yeah they we do ask a lot i don't have no idea uh why uh the largest school district doesn't have additional meetings uh but there are a lot of districts that only have one me meeting a month mm -hmm. uh this board likes to be involved likes to be aware uh as you know you get invited to data chats and you get invited to other uh opportunities that aren't offered to other board members in other districts. So, uh, and you get a lot, a lot of information. And sometimes, and I've heard, we need to have time for to process that information. <laughs> so we'll be scheduling time to do that this year so that the board can take all this information and understand it more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say, a lot of, several study sessions we've requested. Yeah. Yes. As we, um, we usually get here for closed session about four. 4 p.m. So we, you know, by the time it gets yeah. to not yet, three. Well, it's three sometimes today. It's three sometimes it's three. I mean, we try to get as much in as we can in a meeting, but you do start to lose focus after five hours. And so <laughs> we, um, and we like the study sessions because, and everybody's invited to them. And it's an opportunity to talk to teachers, to talk to administrators, and to go more in depth in what we want to know about. So um, it's interesting to be criticized for having more meetings. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of interesting to me. Okay. And they want a personal invitation too. I think we, what we should do is <clears throat> we have them on the website <clears throat> and because I've been monitoring it for over a year now because I was concerned that mm -hmm. people weren't getting it. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think I don't know how to you know, make it even more plain. I mean, it is in many areas, and, and Sherry, I appreciate, um, Snyder is making sure, you know, that we get the community out. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I just don't know how else to, you know, get it, you know, the information out to them personally. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you can't. You're, you're can't make up your mind. Huh? I can't. I miss Matoya. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and we've been criticized for having meetings during the day, and one of the reasons that we'll have an, a study session, especially our study session meetings, which are fascinating, and if you can come, please do. They're but recorded. The, too. They're they're recorded, and the teachers are the ones that are presenting, mm -hmm. and we don't want our teachers to have to be at the middle or the end of an endless board meeting because they've done presentations and we get to do in and out and back and forth. So we'd like to keep it roughly within their work day. So we're not adding to their burden. We'd mm -hmm. like our teachers refreshed every morning when they come to school. And, and there's a lot of thought that goes into when we have a board meeting. <laughs> and plus some of us actually have things to do other than our board meetings. And we have to work around their work, our work schedules and our doctor's appointments and our families. And so I don't know how Mrs. Snyder does it on some days when she goes, we have to have a meeting and who can come? And it's amazing. So thank you for you that. Great job. In this season of Thanksgiving, thank you. Yeah, season. Okay. Oops. So we're uh, moving on to the consent calendar. 
Okay, all items listed under the consent calendar considered to be, uh, by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion. This includes the consent calendars for business, education services, human resources, student service, uh, support services, and the superintendent. There will be no discussion on these items prior to the, the time the board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff, or public request specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar. Public requests of items to be discussed and or removed should be submitted in writing prior to the board's consideration of the consent calendar. Okay. Um, we have a motion. Yes. Move approval. Second. I have my light on. I, uh, I just saw, I'm sorry, it was written down. And then just the floor. Uh, yes, I'd like to um, remove 17.b.2, please. Uh, the master contract with Vitalink. Just for, I mean, I just have a couple of comments, and so it can go to the end. Okay, 17. B2. B2. Okay. So we have a motion, I'm sorry. Discussion yes, to discussion action. Um, so we have a motion to uh, approve the consent calendar except for the removal of 17. B2. Um, moved by Ms. Yelsey, seconded by Ms. Black. All in favor? Oh, Aye. Uh, Aye. No. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I know that one of the things that we are going to be we're setting is the organizational meeting. Um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Snell, for 17E, it's under the superintendent approved oh. setting of the, uh, the board, Did the Board of Education that? annual mm -hmm. um, organizational meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that um, I would like to discuss um, is the necessity, because we have two new board members mm -hmm. coming on board, and I don't know whether it's appropriate or not, um, so you'll have to let us know, um, but there are certain ones of these items that are absolutely mandatory, must, must occur and must do it. But until we have an opportunity to have a conversation with the, the new board members about, mm -hmm. about the rest of them, is there a way that we can structure this in terms of putting it so that we have to vote on that? Mrs. Floor, this is just to schedule the date. Is this to yes, schedule, this is schedule the date? Yes, to schedule the date. Okay. Uh, it's not the format, and uh, so we will. Uh, I will speak with the board president, okay. and, and we'll talk about Perfect. the format. And uh, I believe you were. Uh, there were several questions asked mm -hmm. because there are different types of organizations on there. Yes. And mm -hmm. so it needs to be clear which ones are uh, actually board required perfect and okay. which are and more like ad hoc great terrific and yes and mm -hmm. it in the meeting that that you have will 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 at that time if some of these are scheduled on a different date since that was only scheduling the date or to be extended or that that's okay to just perfect for the ad hoc okay, yeah for great. the ad hoc ones i don't thank think you. it's a problem thank okay you, thank you. i think that that's Thanks, a Paul. good idea because we also need to give the new members um, some insight as to when they are held. <laughs> that's and how long important. the meetings go? Okay. Um, so I think I ha I took a vote. <laughs> oh. Shall I take a vote again? Yes. Would you do it again? Uh, yes. Consent calendar moved by Mrs. Yelsey, seconded by Mrs. Black. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Moving on to the resolution calendar. Uh, move adoption of resolution 151118 Distinguished mm. Service Award for Judith A. Franco. Second. Oh, this is the whole thing. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> move adoption of the resolution uh, consent calendar, which is resolution 151118 Distinguished Service Award for Judith A. Franco. 141118 wow. Selection of Farmers and Merchants Bank oh. as Depository for Various Accounts of District and Authorization therewith. Uh, resolution 131118, authorization of signatures for the Newport Mesa Unified School District Board uh, representation, uh, workman's <laughs> compensation for farmers and merchants bank, and a resolution 121118, establishment and maintenance of district self-insured property and liability trust account authorizations therewith. Judy, you're under great company with all these finance ones. <laughs> I, I still second it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the resolution consent calendar has been moved and seconded. Uh, one, um, we need a roll call. Ms. Snell? Yes. Ms. Matoyne? Yes. Ms. Fleur? Yes. Mr. Davenport? Yes. 
Ms. Franco is absent. Ms. Black? Yes. Ms. Yelsey? Yes. Okay, moving on to discussion action, uh, 19A, Dr. Navarro. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. Okay, so it is time for uh, the uh, for you to approve the uh, Delegate Assembly nominations. Um, okay, oh yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Matoye is nominated this year. Uh, yes. And so, um, who nominated her? I didn't. I did. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So if we're fortunate, we'll continue to have three okay. uh, members on, on the delegate list. And okay. you will still have to work around the California School Board's uh, conference, conference in the coming year, <laughs> mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. exactly. So uh, I will hand this over to Mrs. Snell, who can uh, move, ask okay. for a motion. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. So um, the... So do we do I mention Ms. Matoye or just say approve the 2019 CSBA delegate I'd, assembly? I'll be glad to just move the uh, okay. uh, that we nominate uh, mm -hmm. Charlene Matoye for the two th as a delegate for CSBA okay. California School Board Association. Okay, so it's uh, moved by Mrs. Um, Floor and seconded by I'm sorry, Mrs. Black. Mrs. Black. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And Dr. Navarro, you'll be writing a letter to all your colleagues yes. in the, yes. dis, in the yes. okay. Orange County. Uh, okay, 19B, um, approve agreement with Grant Thornton LLP for an other post-employee benefits, OPEB, liability funding policy actuarial study. Mr. Trader. What a fun topic. Doesn't that sound like <laughs> fun reading? Oh God, are you giving a presentation? <laughs> Is that the right attitude to have, <laughs> President no. Snell? No. I know. This is when I get excited. You guys, you guys know what this is about already. Okay, no. Yeah, like and now for the scintillating portion of your movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, that's so uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> President Snell, um, distinguished board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and guests. Um, Let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about post-employment benefits. Um, so tonight we want to talk about some related employee liabilities and some recent accounting changes oh that have boy. been made. Hardly wait. <laughs> and uh, uh, oops. so, and then some options that you have. So first of all, um, and then next steps. So <clears throat> what is the liability here? Uh, you know, <clears throat> you have. We have some promised obligations that we have made to employees that are in the future. And um, we're obligated to provide those things. And if we don't have all of the money set aside for to, to cover those obligations, that is an unfunded liability. Mm -hmm. So for example, take your home. If you have borrowed money to buy a home and, and you don't have all of the money to pay off that loan, then you have an unfunded liability mm -hmm. on, on your books somewhere. And so um, <clears throat> with that, we have a worker's compensation liability for those um, sometimes uh, employees get injured for that uh, in some ways, and we have a liability to take care of that. And, and this liability is fully funded. The district has fully funded that liability, and that's about $13 million. There's pension liabilities, and we know that <clears throat> the pension liability, that's, mm. that's really uh, yeah. kind of governed by the state, and uh, that liability is going to take care of itself at some point. Um, we're doing that by paying higher uh, pension rates, and so over time, that liability will go down and, and will be um, eliminated at some point in the future. That's the plan. And then there's... Um, other post-employment benefits or health and welfare. This covers those employees who retire, eligible employees who retire between the ages of 55 and 65, generally speaking. So there is the cost of providing those benefits um, for health and welfare that we have um, uh, promised. And so <clears throat> there's some accounting standards related to these liabilities. And these folks who set these standards it's called the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, and they set the rules. They, they tell us how things are counted, when they're counted, how they're displayed, and what's counted. It's um, 
fascinating reading. And so, um, and For they, you. They, they, yes, they pronounced and you, some new I mean, statements recently, um, and specifically Governmental County Standards Board number 75. Mm. And <clears throat> that has, um, what that does is it says, hey, look, not only uh, <clears throat> we have a statement in, in your audit report, and it's essentially our net worth statement, it's called net position, and that adds up all our assets and all our liabilities, and then you get down to a balance here, mm -hmm. and, and if it's positive, you're good, right? If it's negative, maybe not so good. And, um, and they've made some changes to that. Mm -hmm. The first change they made was that we had to take our pension liability, which yeah. was on the state books, and move that into our books. So we did that, and then they um, indicated that we also now, starting with this year's 17-18 audit, audit, we needed to move in our OPEB liability onto our net position statement. So when you take um, and look at the impact there, I'm sorry, these numbers are a little small, <laughs> but when you look at the impact, in 2014, you had a net position of $157 million. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, and then after though you include the pension include you include the pension liability well then you have a negative net position of 79 million <laughs> not so good, not so good. Um, <clears throat> and then <laughs> it's really bad when yeah, you include the, the OPEB liability you have a net uh, position of a negative 144.7 million now this is important in that um, the rating agencies uh, for which we borrow money and um, they recognize that the pension liability really is a state obligation. And so they have granted the district a AAA rating, which is a wonderful benefit to the taxpayers of this district and to your uh, remarkable foresight to make sure the districts manage in a way that we can get uh, a triple a rating because you saved the taxpayers about 140 million dollars in your latest uh, debt offering um, which is great for the community it builds um, uh, wealth in the community and that's a good thing however opeb may be different and we don't know how they're going to look at it um, but it's a different animal because we control it. It's not a state liability. It's really something you control through either making changes to the, to the plan or to funding the, the liability. <coughs> and you can see historically how this has um, progressed. You can see in the blue there, that's the pension liability and how that's, that's gone up. That's gonna go down though, but it's mm -hmm. gone up because they've, um, reduced their assumption for how much money they'll make on investments. Mm. So each year that's kind of gone up as, as, those, as that assumption has gone down for investment returns. And then you'll notice in the orange there, a big jump in 1718 for OPEB liability. It almost tripled. It went from 40 million to 116 million. It's ridiculous <laughs> it's just, um, when you look at that. And, and the reason for that is the rules, again, associated with how it's counted and what we can count. And they changed that to say, hey, look, you can't, you have to use, if you're not going to um, fund a liability, then you have to use the 20 year bond rate for how much money and how much in, uh, investment money you can, can count. And so we can't count a whole lot at all. And so that, uh, when you're dealing with these long time horizons, that's a, that begins to have a large impact and so you can see that it, it, it triples our liability just overnight. Now, <clears throat> with that, I, I want to make sure you, it, it, the sky's not falling. <laughs> um, you may and and you may hear that out in the public. Maybe some some folks who may try to scare people and say the sky is falling. Look, there's a, a negative net position here. And that's just simply not the case. It's again, it's much like a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the bank really is going to come to you tomorrow and say, hey, pay it now. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally not going to happen. However, on the other side of the coin, 
um, it does make sense to think about options to proactively manage that liability. So the overall, the co overall cost comes down. And so with that, there are some options here that you have. We can continue as a pay-as-you-go method where we're simply paying for the cost of those um, uh, employee benefits as we go along, which we're doing now. Or we can um, look at pre-funding that OPEB liability. And there's some, some uh, advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, by pre-funding it, you, uh, you can put it into a trust, which means that money is um, set aside for a particular purpose, or, and for that purpose only. And for this case, it would be, only, it would be for health and welfare uh, uh, retiree benefits. An advantage to that is we can invest that in other places other than in the county treasurer. Oh, treasurer. Yeah. Mm. In the county treasurer's uh, uh, office, they're very conservative in how they invest that money. You will never lose any money in, uh, with the county uh, treasurer. Uh, in, at least since 1995. Thank you. Thank you. It is very, yeah. it is super conservative. And, but the key is it doesn't really even keep up with inflation. You're only earning about 1% exactly, yeah. on that. Not even now. So, it's like having it in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Not even now. So it's, and that, that's a downside to that. Um, if you pre-fund it, you can, again, <coughs> put that somewhere else. But you could lose money. And so we'd have to look at uh, where that money could go, how it could be prudently uh, invested, if that's a course that you decided to take. Um, and again, if you do put it in a trust, that maybe takes away some flexibility you might have to be able to use that money. You can draw out certain amounts of those, of those dollars if needed, but it would have to go for retiree health and welfare. Mm. So there's some things to consider, and we'd like to bring some options to you in the very near future about that. Um, the, the key, though, is you were in March of 2005, you passed a resolution and showed tremendous foresight to begin earmarking money for this day, essentially. And over that, since that time, you've earmarked almost $19 million for this. You can decide to put that in a uh, trust or not, mm -hmm. and we'll go through those, uh, those options with you uh, very soon. So anyways, these next steps are, well, <clears throat> you need, in order to do that, we have to initiate an actuarial study. Ah. And so we'd like to ha get your approval to, to have a study done and then come to you with those options. And then if, if we decide to go down that road, <clears throat> or if you decide to go down that road, um, we'd like to research providers and specific trust types, investment options, review those options with legal counsel, and formulate a recommendation for 2019-20 uh, implementation. And so with that, thank you so much for your time. And uh, if you have any questions. I Ms. Matoye. Um, I think I only have one. It may more, it's more than that. Is the decision for OPEB to fund the benefits between ages 55 and 65 a board decision, or is that a state mandate decision at like in stirs that is a board decision so when did we do that a long time ago i mean a while ago but well in, it's in a good decision in, uh, i should back up and explain in 2005 you passed a resolution a resolution to set up a fund and in that fund this is a a revocable fund which means it's simply earmarked got it you could use that money for anything you wanted mm -hmm. if you decide to put it in a trust, well, then there are certain restrictions on mm -hmm. what you can use it for. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the board decided, and rightly and wonderfully for our teachers and our staff and our classified staff, that if you retire after age 55, but before 65, you have the option to participate in the Newport Mesa Health and Welfare benefits just as if you were still employed. Correct. And that was a board decision, and I thank the board for that. It was a good decision that you made for our employees. I'm for that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I well, 
<laughs> when, and when I don't you, benefit. But when you can either. take advantage of it, it's it's a nice thing for the few years nice, that yeah. you get to do but that it's, because it's unrealistically financially. Well, back in the day, yes, <laughs> in 2005, it wasn't so unrealistic as the cost were. That yeah, but was they voted that before that though. Yeah, the, the, the benefits two, was way before that's the 2005. What I, the, 2005, we saw well, you, you put the money away. Down the liability. But the board still made the decision to do that, so we wouldn't have OPEB then. Okay, that's what I meant to have the fund. The I can't remember what the OP oh. employee benefits. Yeah, other oh, the other post employment post employment benefits. Yes. benefits. The board decided to do that, um, or is that something we have to do? Yeah, no, there's a good question here. The, the, there's two things going on here. The the one is to provide the benefit right. at all, and that was done many, many, many moons ago. Long, long time yes. ago. Okay, 1977, I think. See, wow. this I love. 78. So it was after Prop 13. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, when the when the changing stopped in the state. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It, to clarify, mm -hmm. clarify one point. So the the fact that the the district offers this benefit is, to employees is part of the district's bargaining process. So the district bargained as part of its agreement with its employees mm -hmm. to provide this as a benefit to attract right. and keep employees and provide them uh, with good good salary and working conditions. So that's when the liability occurred. When that entered into the district's agreement with its employees through the collective bargaining right. process, uh, as Mrs. Black mentions, the district started uh, acknowledging the, up, the amount of that liability and pre-funding it by contributing to it in 2005. In 1994, so? if you're employed, Mrs. Floor is going to have to help me with this because I don't have it in front of me. I think it's 1994. 95 if you were employed at that time that's the cutoff day anybody that was hired after that no, I, oh, I, I believe so I, I'm not sure do you remember I don't remember well I, I qualified so it, well, it was it was then I mean 88 worked so mm -hmm. um, so it's not like stirs it's not like if we hire or PERS, if we hire a classified or a certificated employee the state mandates that we do our contribution for stirs the way we have to do it but the, it's we have this liability that was something we did for our employees that you know we can own and that's a good thing we have that so I'm okay, I'm okay that was my cost and all of these unfunded liabilities that we have are because of our employees and the only way to really cut everything down would be to get rid of all the employees and then we would have zero which is unrealistic so if we continue to hire employees to have the best class sizes and the best stuff we're going to have an unfunded liability yeah so we can yeah. work for free that yeah that'd be good too that's only board members mrs floor a, a couple of things um one is grant thornton is the best uh that in the best of this business of doing actuarial studies i'm i'm just asking the question they they are qualified yes they um, do these things this is one of their specialties okay in which they do and they're well known throughout the industry for i think they did it for Coastline ROP too, yeah. so yeah. Um, and then with these post-employee benefits, Other they questions. also, the employees also elect to participate, right? Or is it all employees? Because don't they, they have, if they're going to retire between those magic numbers, they can elect to purchase the purchase and if Continue. they elect to purchase and stay in the health and welfare benefits that's when the the liability occurs if they do, if they're not and if they elect not to participate we don't have an, a liability on them is that well actually the <clears throat> the report's going to count them as having liability because they could always change their mind and not decline the benefit so the okay. liability is going to count everybody that's eligible okay. for the benefit Okay, so it's just, it's all, it, and it goes up every year. It's all the eligible, that, you know, once they hit the magic 55, they, they go into, they go in. Correct. And then, and as people working. turn 65. Then they and, go out. And they go out. And, and yeah, they go out, yes. Okay, okay. Unless they choose to purchase it. But. At a different cost. Yes. And so when, if, 
Okay. So when you're going to be presenting the options, you're going to be looking at different types of financial advisors and other options and all Correct. of that. The difference is that we establish a trust. That trust is irrevocable. Yes. You can use probably the, the interest on that and draw out of the interest. Correct. Can you borrow against the trust? Hmm. It's not. I don't believe I'm so, just, but I'm that's just, a great question. I will. I will. I mean, it's just a question of whether you can, whether you know, you put your money in there, and and can you can you borrow because you know that the money's there. Can yes. you borrow against it? That's a great for, question. For I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do know that you can actually borrow to fund the liability. So I'm not sure if you can borrow against the money that's already in the in the uh, trust. So we'll. I will do some homework and get right back to you. Okay. Great. It's, it seems like you would have to use the money for what it's intended if you borrowed against it. Correct. And yeah. so and I guess what, what Mrs. Fleur I think is leading to is, hey, could we take that 19 million and borrow against it to, to pre-fund it even more? Uh, yeah. So oh, instead yeah. of coming with 19 million, we'd come in with 40 million mm -hmm. or 50 million. Right, yeah. yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, any more questions? Thank you very much. You. No action, right? Um, I, I have one speaker. Um, um, Dr. Dowdy wants to speak on 19B. So um, as uh, Mr. Holcomb did mention, this is the OPEB benefit is a negotiated item between mm -hmm. the two employee groups, which you're aware of. Uh, there also is a payroll deduction that's done where employees do help contribute to that f uh, fund. So mm -hmm. wanted to make you Good. aware of that Thank in case you, you did not remember. Uh, and this is a valuable benefit that is unique among many school districts in the area, which Newport Mesa has valued for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we do want to make sure that the fund is solvent and figure out ways mm -hmm. to make sure that it continues. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So moving on oh, to... Oh, you need to approve. Uh, oh, oh. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> move, <laughs> move approval of the agreement with Grant Thornton LLP for... Other post-employment benefits liability funding policy actuarial study. Second. Okay, so moved by Ms. Matoye, seconded by Ms. Black. I'm sorry, Mrs. Floor. Sure. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, on to 19C. Uh, second reading and adoption of modification to board policy. Mr. Lee Sung. Well, Ryan's uh, warming up the computer again. Yeah. Um, just a, a quick little recap of uh, what we're doing this evening. Um, so we uh, approved quite a few policies the last uh, board meeting. Uh, I was asked to bring back two of the policies uh, for a second reading, starting with the first one as board policy 3514 regarding environmental safety. And in just a bit, we'll have it up on the screen for the public. But, uh, but I know you all have hard copies in front of you. So one of the um, uh, questions that was raised by uh, Britt Dowdy was the fact that does this policy include um, the heat plan and the work that we've been doing in that particular area. So since the last meeting, I, I did take a very close look at this policy. I did have a very deep discussion with Tim Holcomb because this really is a business policy. And reading it, it has to do with environmental safety and not really weather. It's really not a weather policy. Uh, and when you read it closely, they talked about various things that the district would uh, take into account related to air quality, related to smog and smoke, related to diesel exhaust, uh, asbestos, uh, the, using the least toxic pest management uh, strategy, and so on. So it really isn't pertaining to weather. And I did point out the last time, and I want to repeat that, that we do have uh, a contingency in another board policy, which was uh, updated last time, regarding emergency schedules that we've utilized in our protocols. Uh, I also found another policy related to sun safety, and that's a policy that's currently uh, on the books for us. It's board policy 5141.7. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember,
remember a few years back, there was a lot of attention about ultraviolet effect mm -hmm. on skin, and, mm -hmm. and so there's some related to, to heat as well uh, in that policy. So, um, so we're recommending that the board approve this policy with the, the uh, revisions that we pointed out last time. Uh, and as I mentioned last time as well, these are all fully vetted by CSBA. They have their attorneys, they reviewed it, and uh, we are recommending uh, the changes as stated as last time. Uh, are we gonna take these all at once or one at a time? I like one, at, one a time. at a time. Okay, so I'd like to move that we dispense with uh, the first reading and move for adoption. No. Yeah, this is now second reading. Oh, this is the second reading, yeah. okay, move adoption. Oh, sorry. Yes, Second. Okay. Uh, so it's been moved by uh, Mrs. Flores, seconded by Mrs. Yelsey. I'm sorry. Just one quick. I okay. just you didn't see it. I know I didn't, Mrs. Okay. Um, and just to clarify, the heat concerns, the heat, the heat issues are in another policy. Mm -hmm. We well, uh, we have heat a heat protocol. Heat protocol okay. is in another. Yeah, and we do have AR. the emergency schedule policy, okay. which was approved that That's we right. stated that Got the it. superintendent or designee has the ability to modify schedules, close school um, for okay. various things, including excessive weather. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on to uh, first reading. No, oh, second reading. Second, second reading. Well, I'm moving on to 19D, aren't oh, I? Not yet. There's two policies. Oh, I'm so. Oh. So the second I'm one sorry. that is being considered now in its second reading. Employee security? Is employee okay. security. So okay. that is board policy 4158, 4258, and 4358. Move approval. Second. Okay, so with this one, uh, there were a couple of questions. Um, one question had to do with a board policy that was cross-referenced, and again, um, Britt Dowdy had pointed out that there was no 35, uh, mm -hmm. 15.7 firearms on school grounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, uh, he was correct. We did look at that, <laughs> and that didn't exist. Uh, but what has existed, and what I was referring to the last time, was Penal Code 626. So the actual statement about uh, that firearms are prohibited, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I will get to that one because that's one oh. of the new policies. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Huh? So, so my point sure. is okay. that 35, 15.7 uh, firearms on school grounds, uh, did not exist, that's a relatively new policy mm -hmm. that CSBA put out. So therefore, this is where I was going with it, therefore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're bringing that for, uh, forward to you in the next item as a new policy to adopt for our district. Okay, so, so he was correct there. Can you move uh, um, yes. to the end? Yeah, so let me point that out where okay. that is. Yeah. So it's on the second page of this policy and it is cited right here oh okay. okay and are we doing this for can it's not convenience but it's clarification for clarification that it will be in place and that way we don't have to bring it back and retype it because yeah. like you said if it's not in place right this second yeah. it, it is a yeah it is a completely separate policy I and mean, we've uh, seen the first reading written but by yeah. uh, CSBA back in 2016 okay. and while we were cross-referencing the other policies to make sure we weren't missing anything else this next policy of 35 31 excuse me, 51 <laughs> 51 31 point seven uh -huh. weapons and dangerous uh -huh. instruments that one is also bringing forth to you as a first reading on the next agenda. Right, gotcha. Okay. 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 I'm okay with that. So. Motion and a second. There's already been a motion. And a okay. Uh, Mrs. Moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by Ms. Matoya. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now. And there it is. And there it is now. Okay. <laughs> now we're moving on to. So now is 19D. item nope. 19D. Yep. This is a first reading. Yes. Oh, got it. Okay. Yes. Starting with board policy 3515.7. Right here. 
Okay, so this would be a, a new policy for us. I do want to emphasize that even though it's a new policy for us, that the law that this is related to, which is Penal Code 626.9, has been around forever, mm -hmm. thankfully. And that yes. is the main part of this is possession of a firearm on or within 1,000 feet of school grounds is prohibited. So that uh, is there. And uh, there are some exceptions, of course, for law enforcement and some other uh, examples. But uh, this is a very, obviously a very important policy and, and recommending that we adopt the policy mm -hmm. in its entirety. There is a couple of, of things I want to point out that one of the cross-referencing that's right here under 3515.3, the title of this is different in our district since we do not have district police, the title of this should be amended to be campus safety facilitators. Okay. And that policy was recently uh, amended uh, just a few months ago by student services. So <coughs> I would like to make that amendment move, for move your to consideration. Adopt. Oops, right. Is there anything else? The other th thing I want to point out is it was recommended by the edit committee that we add school vehicles and buses. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I do want to say I understand where that's coming from because certainly that would be prohibited for a student or a staff member to have uh, a dangerous object on our school bus, which is within our jurisdiction. I'm concerned about adding this because if you read the context of the Penal Code right. 626, no, it has to do with 1,000 feet. Right. So theoretically, if there's a bus there and someone has a, let's say, a concealed weapon uh, you know, certificate, and they're pulled up to a stoplight next to a bus, they'd be violating our policy. Oh. So I think that's why it's not listed in there as mm -hmm. part of the definition of what mm -hmm. school grounds are. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I, well, here's my, I, I was the one that put this in, mm -hmm. only because I couldn't figure out how to say that you can't have, you can't have a weapon on a school bus regardless of where you are. I mean, bottom line is you can't, you know, an employee can't be having a school, you know, or when they're training, or a kid can't be trans, you know, you're, you're transporting kids. And, the, and I didn't know whether, how to, I mean, this says parking lots. I went, oh, well, then that would qualify. But how do you, how do you say On the that you cannot, you may not be in possession oh, of, of a weapon without permission mm -hmm. when you're transporting children <laughs> or, you know, you're driving a bus or you're in a district vehicle. I wasn't sure where where it can, should go. So that's why I just put school buses and district vehicles. Can you put it in the um, the last paragraph before oh, no, the, the per, uh, pro, prohibition? Against, uh, I guess against it could, the possession yeah, of firearms we, and school grounds that's, or. So I'm okay. I guess the bottom line was I was okay, but I wasn't sure because that was my concern is not necessarily, I just didn't want them. They couldn't have it regardless of where they are. They can't be on a school bus and it can't be in a district mm -hmm. district vehicle unless they've got, they follow the policy that says they've obtained prior permissal right. or they've and, got and a permission. So how do and we and I that? think maybe uh, along what you have suggested is we make that very clear in a separate sentence, but we take it away from uh, I'm okay this with that. paragraph yeah. that cites the penal code. Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely, okay. I am absolutely Possession fine with that. Possession of a firearm is also prohibited on school vehicles and buses. Yeah, that works for me. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yeah. But could you say on school property because buses are school property, so. Yeah, but this included? is so, all those other property things that are, uh, I think of property as buildings and land and property real estate, data. but I'm saying, I, I, think, I think having the school property. bus mm -hmm. clearly, I just want to just on yeah. school buses, I, I, just I, I definitely hear your point, but I think just a standalone statement, just yep. to be very clear that uh, possession of a firearm is also, or is prohibited on school vehicles and slash buses. Mrs. Black. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I should have turned off. Oh, okay. You Never answered. Mind. Thank you. I appreciate that. So are you going to bring this back then? What, what are we going to do? 
So <clears throat> I'm okay with it amend, amending it if you just put that sentence in. I'm okay with amending it and re, you know, I think that that okay, works. So taking it out of the the paragraph that references the penal code and putting it in a standalone paragraph or sent yes, yeah, sentence, sentence. Well, yeah. that Sorry. that talks about. Well, I mean, what about like the it above doesn't fit in legal the other two why? The, pro yeah. the prohibition against the possession of firearms on school grounds. That talks about the code. Or, well, it should including, be there. Including, including. Yeah, you I, I say or, you say so including. I think the safest thing is to, to take it away from that paragraph because this probably mirrors exactly what Penal Code 626.9 says. So, it's, I'm just, I'm, I know I'm throwing another monkey wrench in this whole thing. But do we have a policy on, trans don't we have a policy on transporting children? We do. So maybe this, instead of dealing with it on weapons and firearms, because this is, it talks about firearms on school grounds, maybe we just scratch the school vehicles oh, and buses on this process and then put that into the transportation because, you know, on further reflection, there are times when a principal may be transporting kids in their own vehicle to, Mm -hmm. well, in an outburger for a special no. treat, so so it, it's probably it's probably better to take a look at the transporting and right. add it in into fact, that. In fact, that was one of the policies we reviewed the last time. But but the reason why I like about this this one is about firearms. Period. Okay, perfect. And, uh, and you know if we way. need to <clears throat> modify the title of school grounds and. Ah, All vehicles. district vehicles, we can okay, make perfect, it clear right. there as well. As, perfect, as okay. a member of the public, if I was worried about firearms and guns, I would go to this correct. policy, and Not. school buses should be in that one. Okay. Uh, I still think I think we should pull it until he brings it back. That's fine. Okay. That. that works. Okay, moving on. Okay. So All right. Gonna, uh, and the next policy uh, for its first reading is. For policy 5131.7. Okay, this is a policy related to dangerous uh, or weapons and dangerous instruments for students. And uh, this was actually brought forth to the board for an update fairly recently, March 2017. And the reason why I brought that forth just to get everything updated, we changed the governing board to Board of Education. And there was one phrase that was in the most recent CSBA mm -hmm. update, mm -hmm. and it just clarifies that unless he or she has obtained prior written permission as specified below. So here, they're not to bring weapons, they're not to bring dangerous objects, but there are some exceptions and a process for approval if that is to be given. So that's added there. Uh, there was one word change, uh, recommenda uh, recommendation from the committee, and that is to use the word bring rather than possess, which I think is much clearer. Thank you. Uh, my, my only comment, <laughs> it sounds funny to say um, uh, obtained prior written permission to threaten others with a weapon. I mean, I don't know, there's something weird about that. Well, <laughs> a, a student, Unless he or she has obtained prior written permission as specified below, a student possessing or threatening. any weapon, dangerous or shall be, I know, but you would never get prior permission to threaten somebody with a weapon. No, but no. you would get permission to possibly bring it. Bring it to hold on. For no, example, I, I completely or understand what you're saying, but unless he or she has obtained prior written permission as specified below, it should apply to everything in the rest of that paragraph. Well, I got and there's it. no, uh, no. Uh, prior permission to threaten someone. See, I would read it, I would read that, I would take that unless he has, and put it at the, at the end of the sentence, unless, you know, a student possessing is da 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 unless he or she has, or, or, different? unless he or she has written a student <laughs> 
This is what we do in the committee meetings. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. These didn't so, go through committees. They've already so. met. This is what, this is what we did. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No, we didn't, didn't, meet, we didn't on meet, on meet on this. And that's oh, why. Okay, that's why that's the good three of us are on that committee. <laughs> so yes. maybe we should bring that one back. Or just yeah. that paragraph. Because I agree. Uh, we would agree. never give permission for a student to threaten anybody with anything. No. So, so it doesn't perhaps seem those, like, yeah. the, the concept that's in there needs to be separated out. Well, yeah. no possessions. No. Students. I'm sorry, but there may be there may be a student who has been has been uh, raped and may want to hold Carrie Mace. May feel threatened and may. Oh. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, let's That's let's be realistic here. There may be a student, in mm -hmm. fact, or even a teacher or anybody else who has who is under court order and may may feel the necessity. So I think that we just have to have a conversation about That's the placement of the sentence and how where it, where it goes. My other question was, Works and I have, I have a further question, hmm. is storage of this. Where, it, there's nothing in here that talks about where this is and displaying it. In other words, okay, so we grant them permission that doesn't mean that they can brandish it, correct? Or it has does it does it or must it remain? Does it, it remain? Yeah, or threaten? Does it remain in their backpack? Does it remain in? I, I don't there know. There's storage. I, Any weapon allowed shall be stored in a locked vehicle or in an appropriate locked container before and after its authorized use. There, it that's there. Well, there's pepper sprays yeah. here too. It's so, right there in the. Mm. Second page. And sometimes it's okay. Again, it's uh, I, if I can give you some context to this, mm -hmm. you know, this is uh, a, a carve out really for when students have an antique Civil War right. weapon that mm -hmm. is a real weapon and they want to bring it uh, bring for it. a history class. Right. Yeah. It's not usually, you know, if someone has a brand new nine millimeter, they don't usually bring it to show it off. Right. Mm -hmm. It's usually an antique yeah, yeah, yeah. or some yeah, kind of yeah. valuable yeah. Uh, right. uh, type of heirloom that they bring in that's been, been in the family. Uh, could be something, could be a knife from World War II even that was captured while mm -hmm. someone was in Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a unique carve out. Per, I, I don't even know if we need that se uh, uh, sentence up there. It's pretty clear that if you bring a gun in your van, that's, that's just ed code. Yeah. The permission to bring is really for educational purpose, so right. I don't even think you need, unless you know, for well, permission well, before. Well, down here in the below, right here. Look, it says advanced, advanced position for educational purposes. But Mrs. Flora, I know we discussed this on one of them. Mm -hmm. um, that there are, we don't want to make it impossible for some a unique situation, a specialized situation. But that's why you have advanced permission. But that was educational. Not that's the for only protection. And we were talking about pepper spray. Well, and I don't believe the law allows you for anything but educational. Uh, no. It's got to be. Not for that. students. Right. For students. No. Exactly. So oh, is this a student section? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The pepper well. spray for employees, which is the one we, we approved last time, gotcha, thank you. has an exception, They're this one does together. not. But, but Dr. Navarro is exactly right that it, it is one of those types of situations, a ceremonial sword. Yeah, uh, okay. You know, they're, they're so bringing it for a presentation. Then maybe we need to take that whole that whole sentence that you added in, that was because Yeah, it, it, exactly, and that I think that's a, a viable option is, you know, just remove that. It's not yeah. necessary. Get rid of the it, it okay. might create more student confusion. Possessing. All right, right. Anything. works for me. Because it's two different things. Okay, that okay. works for me as well. I can handle that too. Okay. The we'll rest of it looked fine to me. Move approval of 5131.7. Second. Okay. Right. So as that as amended. is um, moved by Mrs. Floor, seconded by Ms. Matoye. Is this going to be a first reading or a second reading? Actually, you have to, oh. in your motion, you have to dispense with the second reading. Are we going to dispense with it? Yeah, we can. W once we got rid of that sentence. Okay. Yeah, dispense with, and I move to dispense with the second reading. And okay. I still second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Moving Very good. On. Cooper one. So I, I will bring back for a second reading the firearms right. on school grounds, right. district vehicles. Right. And, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Are you okay with the reference even though we're bringing it back? Thank do you. I do I have yes? I figured I would have some cards. Okay, you'll be one of their first duties. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. The superintendent's evaluation. Performance. Oh, I didn't see that. Because she already spoke on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could she speak again? Yeah. Okay. Um, but, um, uh, Ms. Roberts, um, you already spoke on 19E. I know, but you can only speak on the same subject once. But she was asking to have it to, to, uh, oh, that's right. Deferred. Another day. Yeah. You can read these slides. And you can do that. Okay. 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 Let me, um, okay. So she was asking for it, but she also made other, you also, Ms. Roberts, can you come up to the podium, <laughs> up to the thing? 17B2. I only got one card, and Anne, I thought you were sp uh, you were speaking on all three. Can you come up to the thing? Yes. Um, I thought you were speaking on all three because in public comments, uh, many people speak on more than one item. So I thought you were speaking on. So I was told I could just put all items on the one card. Okay. That's Okay, okay, the that future, would be, be helpful in the future. We will let them know that you need to fill out separate cards because. It doesn't say it on the card, so when I was told I could do that, I did that. Okay, oh, I figured you were told you could do it. Okay, why don't we start with you then? Okay, which one are we talking about? Um, 19. Well, we've already passed on 17B. Yeah, we've already done that one. What? Yeah. B, we've already passed. We've already voted on the consent calendar. I know. I thought she what? she spoke on 17B already. Okay. Which one? Um, I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of 17Bs. 17B. Um, Which one? I don't know. 17B is education. This is on the consent calendar. It has to do with the Colexia. Okay. 17B1. Okay. Learnings. We've already, we've already, we've already passed we've already it. Passed it. I, I, I thought you spoke you on it. I speak to it because I did put on my card that I wanted to speak to. You may, you may speak to 19E and 17B. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, For three minutes, yeah. Thank you. So okay. good evening, uh -huh. members of the board mm -hmm. and community oh, stakeholders. Nice. My name is Eric Roberts. I'm a longtime resident of Newport Beach, and I'm a mom of four kids. I'm here again to speak to you about something that is very concerning to me. Martha Floor on the contract for Corlexia. Um, it is stated as 10-1-2018 to 9-30-2019, and they are suggesting 5,000 5, licenses at $30 per student, which is about $150,000. And then there's um, a, a quantity of one for $6,000 for implementing support for something called Power Up. I was at the park today, and I was talking to some parents and they were saying, we don't get to do Corlexia 5 anymore. So they were told there wasn't licenses for it. It seems strange to me that we're approving a contract that we're already into and that um, it, it ends in September. So that's kind of strange. And you said before, stop bringing us things that, to approve that are already underway. But the LCAP for 2017-18 says parent involvement. Um, it says involve parents in decision making and in programs that support students in academic achievement. Um, I would like to see that. I do not know why we're getting rid of Corelexia 5 personally. A lot of kids need it. Um, I would like a report on which grade levels currently have access to use Lexia Core and which ones will have access to Power Up. If we're only giving 5,000 licenses, how are we going to help our children? Kids in third grade are still developing those reading skills. They might not be the lowest of the low, but a lot of kids use that program. The current program does not have online support for parent, teacher, student connection. The teachers are still learning how to use those curriculums. If they exist for parents, then someone needs to teach us. But do not take something away, that, and you're going to char be charged $150,000, and the contract is already happening. But teachers don't have access to the licensing. They're, they're telling their kids in third grade, we don't have licenses. So which one is it? Are, are principals being told there's no licenses? This is the <coughs> one tool, along with the star reading, that the district pays for. My school and other schools, the foundation pays for every other supplement. 
I want to bring your attention to this. This is a consultant that you all chose, and his name's um, Tom, and he basically says, based on my meetings with Newport Mesa staff, mainly the central office, many Newport Mesa schools struggle to proactively identify students with supplemental needs, determining the most immediate set of skills to address, implementation interventions and supports that best target those skills. Moreover, and, and critically, Newport Mesa needs district-wide, wall-to-wall consistency of efforts that align common sense approaches, common sense approaches, to monitor students' response to instruction and intervention and measure the effectiveness of their supports. And then he goes on to suggest a company who can help us. I've been telling you over and over again, you guys, our kids need help. There was damage done, real damage that happened. Why are we only okaying 5,000 licenses? We should not be doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the contract. You can look at it. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Did you um, it or no? Uh, no, I, I'm sure I have a copy of it. Um, do you want to address this, Mr. Drake? Sure. <clears throat> You so as you, as you know, we adopted a uh, co comprehensive uh, language arts program mm -hmm. in Wonders uh, two years ago. And our first year of, of implementation of Wonders was a, a year for us to explore and learn. Prior to that, um, Lexia, along with several other programs, um, were used to support foundational reading skills. One of the other programs we used prior to Wonders also was um, SIPS, a systematic mm -hmm. intervention for phonemic awareness. Mm -hmm sight words and so forth, um, really addressing those foundational skills which are critical to address. Um, we continued using Lexia through the first year mm -hmm. of, of our adoption process, or of our implementation process, while at the same time carrying on several conversations with principals in deciding how we were going to address foundational skills and reading for our students, knowing that it has to be systematic knowing also that Wonders, as our first best instruction tool, has a systematic uh, foundational skills component to the program. Along with that, with the, the support that we had been providing sites and the resources with SIPS, the decision was made at that time to use SIPS as our tier two intervention for kids. Mm -hmm. um, there were some principals who still wanted to use Lexia as a supplemental resource. Um, as was stated, supplemental resources are um, funded and, and are, are funded by sites, and uh, those decisions of what supplemental resources will be used at sites are made by sites. Um, so through conversations uh, with, with all of our principals, um, as I said, we decided to move forward with SIPS as our tier two uh, foundational reading skills program um, while utilizing the, the systematic program uh, for foundational skills in Wonders. Some sites also decided to bring on um, Lexia mm -hmm. as an additional component. Um, through those conversations, principals were asked how many licenses they would need mm -hmm. um, need for their site. They provided us that information, uh, and we had to buy a, a minimum amount of 5,000 licenses mm -hmm. uh, in order to um, move forward with, with Lexia for the sites they needed. So we, we actually bought more licenses than, was, than were requested by sites. Um, we did go back out to sites mm -hmm. um, within the last month and ask, do you need any more? Mm -hmm. um, there were some sites that came back and said yes. We asked for, for uh, the number that they uh, needed, mm -hmm. and we were able to provide all of uh, our sites with what they're saying they need at this point in time while moving forward with SIPS instruction for foundational mm -hmm. skills mm -hmm. as a tier two intervention and also utilizing the, the foundational skills component of, of WONDERS. So if a principal decides later that they want to add more licenses, we can... They, uh, they can do that. More we can purchase can more licenses if we so, need. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. But I think it's really clear, it's the principals were asked, so every principal was asked what they felt their community needed, and um, we purchased those for those communities. Correct. And then I think it's really important to understand that the power up is in addition, and it's for sixth grade and upwards. So can you explain that? Yeah, the power because up is actually a new component from Lexia. Um, for um, my understanding, I have not um, jumped in too much, but it's really for our non-English speaking students um, to not only work on the foundational skills component, but also to take them a, a bit further. Um, and ha have not asked too many. There are a few sites. I know there are a few of our classrooms um, that, that are utilizing it, but, but not um, uh, an, an enormous amount of kids are using it. It's a new free component that came along with the 5,000 licenses. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dowdy. Nineteen E, yeah. Nineteen E, right? Okay, good. Yeah, I think these are all for nineteen E. Yeah. Uh, so regarding nineteen uh, E with mm -hmm. uh, the superintendent's uh, merit pay, uh, mm -hmm. firstly, we represent people in evaluations, and we understand the need um, and support the need for the the conversation between the evaluator and the evaluatee to remain confidential, uh, and that document needs to remain part of a personnel file. That's a fundamental component of what we represent. So we would never ask for that evaluation to be a public record. We feel that that would, would then have a ripple effect to other employees which we could not support. Um, however, I think that it might help the community uh, to understand the rubric that's used uh, to, or to understand the rationale in greater detail. Um, I know that years ago the rubric was put in the daily pilot uh, and was searchable years ago. However, you can't pull it up online anymore, uh, and it's not available in any other resource. And uh, having that blank rubric available might help the community. Okay. I thought the the. I thought you already were in a. I thought I mailed that to you a couple of years. Emailed that a couple of years ago. No, but he's saying it should be on, on the website so that people can pull it up. Blank rubric. Yeah. Which. It should be on the website. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I thought it was on the website. Okay, um, Lori Smith. Good evening, Lori Smith, retired Newport Mesa teacher. I'm here to speak regarding item 19E, the superintendent's bonus. I oppose this motion and request that it be tabled to December, and here are my reasons why. First, the public deserves to know how their tax dollars are being used and to be informed of what those established goals are, at least in summary form um, and generalities. I'm not saying the specific document uh, for the superintendent to earn the bonus. Um, second, it should be postponed so that newly elected trustees representing almost 30% of our voting public are able to participate. We also need to know all compensation, including criteria and the schedule for contract extensions. Third, this bonus is not earned. When an A district who has slogged through six and a half years with a C grade superintendent um, we are an A district who slogged through six and a half years with a C grade superintendent. What kind of message does that send to the thousands of hardworking district employees and parent volunteers who work countless hours to raise funds because they've been told there isn't enough money for the programs they want for their kids? This year's bonus of 29812 is a tax sheltered annuity. The fourth one received by the superintendent totaling over 110000 The future value far exceeds the already excessive amount. To top it off, it is paid to a public employee with public money and with intent to avoid taxes the rest of us all pay. Fifth, the public does not support this superintendent. Um, a result of a sur public survey done in April um, in which the superintendent where the respondents were asked if the superintendent was exceptional, gave these results, 97% said no. Some of their comments were as follows. He is most certainly not exceptional and a bonus is ridiculous. Awful. He's not an innovator and does not appear to have a vision. Poor spending habits. A weak and unwise leader who has done more harm than good. A poor manager, manager supported by numerous complaints from teachers, staff, um, and staff of his hostile work environment. Poor decision-making skills, poor use of taxpayers' money. Things are not getting better in the NMUSD schools. In fact, the fact they continue to give raises to the supers is crazy. Um, I feel his priorities focus on salary increases for himself. Why would we continue to reward, reward poor performance? Please change course now. Listen to the voices of your constituents, the teachers, and employees, and respect the public by postponing this bonus award until further consideration can be made. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Roberts. Uh, 
Hi, board. My name is Jeff Roberts. Uh, I equally have uh, four daughters here that we're raising in the Newport Mesa area. Unfortunately, uh, we have chosen to take two of them out of this district uh, to private schools, which uh, is uh, something I would have never imagined in my entire life. So I just want to share that and the frustration over the last three years that you've seen my wife and I come to these meetings to try to share our concerns. And to me, the, uh, the pinnacle of the concerns start with our superintendent. So in reference to this bonus, uh, it's like me asking the taxpayer to reimburse my wife and I for the hours, days, weeks, months, and now years trying to hold the superintendent accountable. I echo everything that uh, Ms. Smith just said. Uh, we're very tired. Uh, we think that leadership change is imminent here in the district. Uh, providing a bonus, uh, I think it's been mentioned, I think it was a superb service uh, as of his previous review. I believe he received a C grade on this most recent review, which is a proficient performance. As a business owner and as an operator of a business, I receive a bonus for my financial performance. If I don't reach my financial goals, I don't get a bonus. We have lots of folks in our organization. We work hard for certain achievement. If we don't reach that goal, there is no bonus. This is a taxpayer bonus for a job that's not being completed efficiently. Please hear us. I'm speaking on behalf of hundreds of families in the district. We're very frustrated. Please hold our superintendent accountable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Lease. Members of the board, um, while I was waiting, I did download the app. And to Ms. Black's um, comments, there should have been something on this app that said there was a meeting tonight. And it should have been special extra on the website too. That's where you can um, get the attention of people mm -hmm. like me, uh, who wouldn't think that you'd be having, although I know about CSBA. Um, thank you, Mrs. Snell, for explaining the policy, however, we, the public, I'm a taxpayer. I'm gonna pay my taxes in a few days, my property taxes. Some of that is measure A and measure F also. So we're at a disadvantage. It's a mystery what happened in the boardroom in the closed session. What did the superintendent do well? What does he need to do better? Why are we giving him $30,000? That's ridiculous. It's when our teachers and our parents are out there selling wrapping paper and, and everything to raise money for the classroom. He already makes three more than $300,000. Um, the survey that I sent you, the complaints, the concerns, those are not made up. Those are real. There is a lot of dissatisfaction among the citizens, among the public with this superintendent. I think that even though it's like you explained in the policy and in his contract, you have to do it by the end of December. You could wait until the new trustees are seated and let them hear your justification in closed session of why he deserves $30,000, another annu annuity, or four of you can vote no and say that we're voting on behalf of the Roberts and the Smiths and the least Mrs. Lease that we're not going to approve this and, and then reschedule it between now and the end of December. He doesn't deserve it. There's dissatisfaction and you are the trustees that are responsible for every penny that, that goes to him and it, and it is not deserved. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, we're moving on to 19E. Um, uh, Can I just speak no, I told you you could speak to both items three minutes, and you just spoke to one. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've you've nope. spoke twice. Okay. Excuse me. You are out of order. You should know better. You're out of order. Okay, okay, I'm moving on. Um, so based on the superintendent's annual board evaluation for 2017-2018, I'm pleased to recommend approval of this agenda item. 
Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I read it before the vote? Okay, I'm gonna read this before the vote. Yes, who, who seconded it? Floor. Floor, okay. This is open session agenda item 19E. <clears throat> One, the third addendum to Dr. Navarro's employment agreement with the Board of Education provides Dr. Navarro shall be awarded a merit performance salary supplement based on the summary performance level as reflected in the superintendent's performance evaluation for the prior academic year. The merit performance salary supplement is separate and apart from salary credible to the state teacher's retirement system, and Dr. Navarro shall not be eligible for additional STRS contribution by the district or himself. The Board of Education has completed the superintendent's annual performance evaluation for the 2017-18 academic year and has determined that the summary performance level is that of proficient performance. The maximum eligible award amount under merit performance salary supplement for 2017-18 is 75% of the IRS limitation amount on a TSA as of 2015. The third addendum specifies that a summary evaluation of proficient performance creates an eligibility amount of 75% of the maximum eligible award amount. The eligible award amount authorized for 2017-18 academic year is $29,812.50, representing the eligibility amount of 75%. As a result, Dr. Navarro shall be awarded per agenda item 19E the payment of $29,812.50 to the TSA of the superintendent's choice and direct, the, and direct the district's chief financial officer to effect payment to the TSA designated by the superintendent no later than 30 days from receipt of both the letter of award and the superintendent's application. I have... Uh, um, a motion by Ms. Mrs. Black and a second by Mrs. Floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And thank you for a great year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, 17B2. 17B2. Um, I ask this to be removed. I am absolutely in favor. I think it's great that we're doing this. My only concern uh, regarding this item, it's a regard... Oh. Okay, let me pull it back up here. It's right here. The vital link? Uh, yeah. The vital link. Um, I read the contract, and what concerns me is um, one area, and that's the, uh, it says in the contract that they will do services. It's, this is for five years at $225,000 for the five years. And it says that for the contractors who are provided here in the contract should be compensated, set forth in Exhibit A. So normally when, and I'm just using Coastline ROP as an example, you know, we know what we're getting. We, we, contract, for a, we contract for a class, yeah. we contract for the teachers, we, we pass through, and mm -hmm. then there's a master agreement that all the, all the funds come through, and it says this is for these, you know, we've met with this. On this contract, it just says, and that's what sort of went, oh, okay. Um, when they mentioned A, I went to Exhibit uh -huh. A, and I went, oh, okay, they're gonna, tell, they're gonna tell me what it is in Exhibit A. And what Exhibit A says, and I apologize for not doing this right away, but mm -hmm. most of you know that my husband was in the hospital this last week, so it's kind of hairy. Um, but in Exhibit A, it says, and I will read this really quick, because it's one sentence, and that's what drew my attention, and I'm glad, thank you, Michael, for being here. I know that you had better things to do. It says, scope of work, provide services to support career and technical education objectives of the district and district-wide, and then the fees and expenses are per the purchase order. So I was going, huh? huh? <laughs> so one, I'm not sure that we're real clear on, as a board, of what the, what the CTE objectives are. 
um, what their district and what services they're providing. I know that we've had conversations about the, ro uh, not the robotics, but the, um, <laughs> the, the college and the college and career night they're involved with, but also the the middle schools that they were doing uh, fourteen thousand uh, dollars per middle school, and that we increased is it fourteen six thousand six thousand, and we we added because Corona Del Mar wasn't part of it, and now that now right. that they're doing so, I thought well okay that's twenty four thousand. It's actually a total of eighteen thousand college and career night eight thousand. And we've been doing that with Vital Link. For right, a number right, of years right, now. right, right. Um, the CTEOC participation, every district in the county pays participation is 5% of your Perkins. That's 4,000 for us. Okay, okay. The exhibit days is a middle school mm -hmm. um, career exploration that you're referring to. Not the great We're program. taking on CDM for that. Uh, the okay. reason is because uh, ROP using our ADA for their CTEIG is picking up the other three. And the reason that that split happened was that CDM middle school, high school, that's not a seven to 12 continuum pathway yet. yet. We're in the process. By the letter of the law, we're not really supposed to fund that unless they are a bona fide pathway. So ROP is picking up uh, three of those schools at 6,000 a piece for 18K. We're picking up 6,000. And, so that's, our, and that, that, that's, what it, that's included in here then? I'm sorry? That's included in this? Right, and so our total for this year is going to be 18,000. Uh, across five years, that's 90,000. 90, I'd have to defer to Jeff to answer uh, the question on, on the setting the amount at 225, but I just wanted to uh, share with everybody specifically what that breakdown is. It's those three items for a total of 18K for this particular school year. Okay, and yeah. that future? Oops, go ahead. In the future? If you have an exhibit that's supposed to, could you put it in there? Even if you don't have the exact dollars amounts? Yeah. Um, well, it does say fees and expenses, so then you'd have to I was them. just, I, I don't want to make a big deal, but I was just like, oh, 225,000, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money for. Five years. Uh, for yeah. fi it's for five years, but I could, five, I could, I could do that. I could do, I thought, oh, I know that they pick up this. I know that they do this and I know that they do this. So, and I, so, I, so I sort of multiplied that and I, like you said, you mm -hmm. came up with about 90,000. I'm going, well, where's the other, where's the other money come but what's that for supposed to be doing for is that classes or <clears throat> that's a great question um <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, have that when i when i was looking at this i thought oh you know this is something that could be really expanded and and the way that these master contract agreements work is that the contract itself obligates the vendor to contractual protections for the district, for example, obligates the vendor to insurance requirements, mm -hmm. hold harmless agreements, those kinds of things that aren't necessarily in our purchase order agreement. And so with this, the way this one works, and we can do this different if you like, but the way this one would work is that we've, the service agreement then obligates them to contractual protections for the district, and then any services that they provide are going to be done through, will, will be authorized by a purchase order under this service agreement. So, so what happens is, is let's say uh, there's a service or whatnot, a purchase order is kicked off referencing this service agreement, and then it goes through all the approvals. So the rates are getting looked at, the service is getting looked at before anything, any work is authorized. So this, the service agreement really doesn't really authorize any work, so to speak, it authorizes an obligation to the, of the vendor to protect the district when it does engage in work that's authorized through a purchase order. So in other words, uh, it, it could be less than 225? Correct. Yes. The, the 225 is just a max. So, so when we hit 225, we stop <laughs> and we renegotiate an agreement. So every purchase order will be coming through to the board, correct? correct. So does yes. every purchase order, every request, like are we going to, like the one that came through for the, the uh, exhibit, exhibit programs? Mm -hmm. That's my yes. understanding, yes. So, so it, yes. it would be functioning just very, very similar to the, how the ROP is. This is, the, this is the service we're going to be provide. This is the amount of students that's going to be, a, you know, this is the number, you know, how, because we get a, we get a report at ROP with uh, the actual ADI, which is curious to know for 225,000, how much, how many students are they affecting? 
Again, I we want, don't to, know. want to say the 225, we're not, the, the 225 to what uh, Mr. Trader just said, that, that's the ceiling that was set. Uh, we didn't draft that 225, okay. that the business services okay. drafted a ceiling. Okay. The amount that I stated for you for those three programs is going to be approximately approximately 18,000 okay. for this for the school year. Okay, perfect. Yep. All okay. right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we need to um, move oh, a motion to yeah. accept that. Well, we moved it off. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'll move it, but I just really want, want to make sure. Do you want to table it? I just it? want to make sure that, no, I don't want to table it. Oh. I just want to make sure that, you know, documentation is provided of what services and the cost of those services on a, in a timely manner that we, that the board, I just want insurances the board's going to be able to see it first and have a conversation about it if, in fact. Yeah, and that will come okay. through a purchase order. Um, however, if this is um, something that you'd like more visibility to, we can redraft the contract and have separate service agreements. I just think for it's really important that, because it's, it's one of our big focuses. You know, CTE is really. I know, but it's going to come through on purchase orders. So if you want to. Well, we'll just have to be real, bit, we'll just be vigilant and. Line item like I do. Like line <laughs> item and whatever is, okay. whenever you guys see it on a, on a new to prep, you'll know that it's coming out. Okay, there you go. I did move it already. Um, I need a second. second. We need a second. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. She didn't get it. I couldn't tell. A bunch of us have moved in. Okay, approved. moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by Mrs. Yelsey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, at carries. Now we're going on to um, board member reports. I am going to start um, listening to um, <clears throat> uh, President Mrs. Snell. Ford. I need to go oh. home because my okay. mom's calling oh, me, and I think she's a little okay. confused on answering. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna go. Okay, so I'm sorry. That's okay. Toodaloo. Okay. Um, so in um, uh, talking about the committees, um, the self-selection of committees that um, our new board members have gotten uh, a copy of. Wow. Wow. It's, it's the door, it's not the, the attitude. Door. Okay. Um, I do agree with what uh, Mrs. Floor said earlier. I think we need to um, um, narrow down the committees for December 11th and um, the uh, and I'm going to tell you which ones I think are going to we need to put on there because they're the ones where representative is required and that would be uh, board president um, board uh, vice president board clerk uh, crop rep and uh, nominating committee, and I've checked these for you if you want. Okay, yeah, nominating uh, committee on school district, district organization, uh, community advisory committee, and SARB, and DLAC. And the rest of them, um, we will, um, so we'll bring that forward at the December 11th meeting, and the rest of them we will table until um, January so we can provide information to the new trustees and um, discuss uh, more what those uh, committees do. Uh, may I make a, uh, Absolutely. a, a amendment? Um, student board member liaison because that is traditionally the uh, past president. Okay. And then all of the appointments of the secretary and That's all of the designated. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't go to the end, did I? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Appointment of secretary. And all Which is those. always a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and a student board member liaison. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. that whole Chief. Back page. Oh, the whole back page. Yeah, the whole back yeah. page. Okay, I didn't check those. Just the personnel. <laughs> um, that's all I have. I'm going to move on to you. Oh, good. Um, in regards to the board committees, I would. Lo I look forward to a discussion where we can talk about what the committees are, what committees maybe we want to add, maybe committees that don't exist anymore or that don't need nine people. We can't have nine, but the, the ones that require a lot of people and less people, I think that's, I look forward to that because committee committee attendance was one of those surprises that I, I had mm -hmm. when I did it. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Isaiah for talking about the Red Cross 
blood drive at Costa Mesa High School, but they're also the Maverick ASB, which is the middle, Costa Mesa Middle School ASB, is participating in the Katarina's Club Pastathon, and they are asking for um, donations of unopened dry pasta or any kind of canned pasta sauce to be dropped off at the Costa Mesa Middle School office before December 6th, and they're going to take them all to Katarina's Club, which is um, the owner of the White House restaurant in Anaheim feeds hungry kids, and they're expanding <coughs> the number of kids they feed beyond Anaheim. And they, he started it, and Katarina was his mom. And he does it out of the goodness of his heart. When the building burned down, the next day he found the places, restaurant. restaurants, they, <laughs> other restaurants, other facilities offered them so he could continue doing it. So I think it's a really good cause. And I like the idea that the middle school ASB is doing that. So I thought I'd spread the word. <clears throat> and we had Thanksgiving break, which was wonderful. And before that, I was able to attend the Costa Mesa High School production of A Midsummer's Night's Dream. And as you were proud of, of CDM, I am equally proud of Costa Mesa. It was my second, high, my second Shakespearean play, <laughs> the first one in modern times. <laughs> and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, the, the students worked hard. It's difficult to understand Shakespearean, Shakespearean language. And I was able to do it. The characters were cast wonderfully. I, we laughed when we were supposed to laugh. We, Questioned. I finally understand some of the characters and some of the references that you get on Jeopardy questions. So it was it was a well done production. I look forward to Legally Blonde in the spring. And that's okay. it. Okay. I, I have no report other than um, just to uh, put out a word for uh, the Rose Parade. Uh, the Rose Parade is desperate for volunteers. Our Girl really? Scout troops went up and volunteered, and it's really a fun community service. It's four hours. Um, they do sign off on community service, and they're desperate for volunteers to cut, paste, and um, all, the only requirement is you can be, have to be 10 years old or older to work, and it's a dry um, with Fiesta floats, and you can go online and look and volunteer. Really fun. Get to see the big floats being put together, and they're desperate for people on December 26th. Great Boy Scout, Girl Scout, any adult, any kid, high school kid, you can volunteer. So okay. it's a great, great opportunity for kids. Mr. Davenport, your last report. No report, just <laughs> <laughs> Consistent. Talkative oh. as ever. <laughs> That's right. don't, rattle, don't ramble on and on. No, like you're that. supposed to say how much you'll miss us all. She won't. <laughs> I guess you said it for me. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, down there, Mrs. Yelsey. Yeah, I have no report other than, again, to thank Mr. Davenport and Mrs. Yep. Franco for their many years of service and uh, support on the board. You've, uh, you will be missed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Raphael, you made it to the whole report. I'm what do you rest. think? Bravo. I thank you for staying. And after all that's gone on tonight, do you think being a board member is in your future? Maybe. <laughs> Good answer. Definitely. Maybe. 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 Okay. Moving over here, do you have anything else? Um, i just like to uh, uh, thank you for this evening and for all the whole year. I, I do want to make a point that gives every citizen inalienable rights. Mm -hmm. Part of those rights are the right to be treated fairly and uh, uh, with evidence, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the speakers mm -hmm. I've never had a conversation with. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they've never interacted with me as you interact with the superintendent. Uh, one of the things that would throw in, a, and I would, you know, I would hand it over to, to Mr. Mr. Dr. Uh, Dowdy right away. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I evaluated someone and I didn't have direct mm -hmm. observation of that, that, sh that doesn't go anywhere. Mm -mm. We have to have direct observation mm -hmm. and direct evidence. Uh, that's only fair to employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a superintendent title does not take away your rights. Uh, so I appreciate Dr. Dowdy's comments. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate the board. It uh, has been a challenging year. It's been a difficult year. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yes. uh, you know, uh, every challenge, regardless of how 
huge it is or monumental is, is a, be is a way to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's only one thing that's constant in this, in this <laughs> field, and that's continual improvement. Yes, yeah. so, absolutely. So uh, we will continue to, to move forward and, uh, and uh, continue to make a difference as best we can in the lives of the, these children. And as like I asked my team to do, uh, make decisions based on what if it was your kid in that classroom, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. would you want to have happen? Mm -hmm. And that's the way we will continue to operate. Thank you. We appreciate that. Sherry, you want to say anything? Oh. <laughs> no, report. <laughs> <laughs> no report. I no report. In honor of Mr. Davenport, no report. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to, as a prior principal at Estancia, and we'll work closely with our school, mm -hmm. to thank you for your efforts for all of our kids. And um, all of the tributes that you got were, were definitely warranted. But the one thing that I didn't hear that I always think of when I think of Walt was his kindness. He was mm -hmm. always kind to everybody. Right. So mm -hmm. thank you for all your help and support. It's been greatly appreciated. And in honor, no report. <laughs> <laughs> I'll echo that. In honor. Of Mr. Davenport, no report. <laughs> Ditto. Oh, God. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move adjourn. Move Second. Adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Everybody say aye. aye. <laughs> Thank you.